Uh, I'm here with Kasim Bentley, uh, great comic, uh, regular at Punchline and Cobbs. He uh, wrote for was it was it Problematic? Problematic with Moshe, Moshe Kasher, mm -hmm. uh, Comedy Central. Also had a Vice Land appearance. Uh, thanks so much for joining me, man. Uh, we're starting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm doing good, man. You were okay. talking about, like, you regret your major. You were, like, talking about, like, how you were, I don't know, impressed by, like, all the moving parts here. Yeah, because yeah. you set up, when you said $2,000, <laughs> I'm looking at this fake Joe Rogan-ass setup of yours with a brick wall and the lights and the big monitor and the chair. And then you got the, 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 the sound absorption, <laughs> this shit, all this, and you got the iPad, another Samsung the monitor, you got the mixer, and you got the real mics, <laughs> these big black dick mics. You know what I'm saying? And you said two G's? Shit. I you know, I got two G's. I was going to say, I could either do that or I could find a way to rob Murad. You know what I mean? Because you should have let me know that because there's dudes in the street right now, if I was running my mouth about them, and they, oh, yeah, man, I was on 3265, man. This little setup, dude had this whole setup for two G's. And they're like, yeah, man, what? 3265, and just find a way and take all this shit. You know how much a crackhead could get with this? You yeah. probably sell it to me for $200, you know what I mean? But like, the, doing that like for $2,000, I mean, granted, taking away like the stuff that you already own, this is incredible, bro. Like, Thank you, you. People should give you the respect. And also, to keep it dumb real with you, did this set up, but you should be creating a network. Well, so I, part of me was thinking if I, well, this is all me, kind of ripping off your mom's house you ever watch your mom's yeah. house yeah which is like aside from the fact that i think i don't think a lot of people watch their podcasts but i almost exclusively do yeah. i think they're just better talk shows um but as they like grew and like built a better set and then they like got another set space and then they had other comedians come in and, and then all of a sudden they have this content network mm -hmm. like Right now, I'm just doing one-offs with people, but part of me is like, me and James talked really effortlessly. Maybe I have like a weekly with James, and he like pitches in for like, with it's its own podcast. He pitches in for marketing, and I do the editing or something like that. Right. Or I rent it out to people that I'm literally just fucking behind the the, the scenes, and, yeah, and they perfect. just talk to each it's other. It's perfect. You, yeah. You're the perfect, like from doing all these years of podcasts and having like, I think sometimes a work, like at least a surface level relationship with certain engineers, you're the perfect guy because you're a comic and you're not corny. Oh, yeah? You're not corny. High you praise. could be corny. Uh -huh. You could be because you look corny. <laughs> Why do I look corny? <laughs> look at you. <laughs> look at you. You know those Disney dog people? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's like half <laughs> half man, half Albanian. <laughs> like, look at this person. You don't look real. Oh, yeah? Like a Middle Eastern puppet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that came to life. Uh, and, and learn how to podcast. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Car Justin Carisi gave me one of my favorite tags, which okay. is uh, recalled Cabbage Patch Kid. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're Egyptian. Yeah. So yeah. you're like in that interesting area because, I mean, for me, you're black. Uh-huh. Because you look, in all intents and purposes, I mean, if the police came here, we both get shot. <laughs> yeah, and they're going to be like, I'm Egyptian. Yeah. I right, put the yeah. guns down. You know what I mean? <laughs> he might be barely into French Montana. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, but you're French, you're Egyptian, nothing like Moroccan or anything. Well, Algerian um, or anything. I, I, no, I actually have a old smidge of Moroccan and somebody on my dad's side fucked a Spaniard at some point, I think. Okay, okay, uh, okay. But, um, my mom is like full blooded uh, Egyptian, and my dad is like I don't know seventy five percent. So I'm. Do I'm, they love being Egyptian? Well, they did. <laughs> they uh, <laughs> they. That, that's one of the things that uh, I think I talked about it with. I had like Haley Beacon and Jordan Thulis yesterday. Yeah. Or maybe it wasn't them. You know what? I was it was it was to Caleb. Yeah. Um, I get so fucking triggered by uh, like privileged kids here who are like this country's a cesspool. I'm gonna move to Canada or whatever like yeah. that because like you don't you don't know how bad it gets. Like, it's so clear you're, like, in this super thick bubble because, like, Egypt was, like, going downhill my entire life, and then there was, like, this, like, uh, flash of, you know, hope with the Arab Spring, and then that turned out to just go so terribly. And, like, like when my, my dad always tells me that uh, when he grew up in Egypt, you could, like, you know, see the sky. It wasn't, right. like, this overdeveloped, like, dude, every time I go back there, it is more like Mordor from Lord of the Rings. Like, just fucking... <laughs> It is black skies of pollution. It's like, it's so bad. And like, and yeah, and just like, you know, uh, like 
Sorry, one second. I'm adjusting levels. Everybody thinks that, uh, like, Trump is hap- happening everywhere. Right. Like, th- that's not just here. Like, conspiracy theories and fucked up leaders and authoritarianism is, like, this weird worldwide trend right now. Because, like, one of my favorite things to cite with that is, like, do you know a fighter from Nigeria? He's on in the UFC. His name's Israel Adesanya. I, yeah. I've read about him. I've, I've seen clips on... I've seen clips on Instagram and on like ESPN talked about it. Yeah, so yeah. He he was arguing this point, which is he said uh, one of the most popular conspiracy theories in Nigeria right now is that the president is like a robo clone. <laughs> and it was such a huge conspiracy theory held by so many people that the president had to address it in a speech. So like how crazy are we really going? You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're going crazy, but everybody's losing their shit right now. I don't. It's insane. I do like the fact that there's some young or some middle aged, like middle aged, it's like <laughs> Egyptian guy in his basement. You know what I mean? Or mother's basement. You know? Did president? <laughs> did you know is he is a robot clown? You know what I mean? <laughs> and then he gets sights on, and like sources say they've seen him putting oil in his back. Like he gets like, and, and he. Post a blog on WordPress, you know, there's no ads, you know, and then there's like whatever Egyptian QAnon kind of shit going on. It's like, that's just, I do like the fact that um, like the world's hatred for Trump could potentially bring certain POCs together. Mm-hmm. Cause like, we, like, for black people, we're just tired. We're tired. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We don't even want to kill white people no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, because partially, look, let's just keep it dumb real. Partially, that looting got us, it busted all our, our revolutionary nuts. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? As soon as, you, as soon as you drove that truck through the Louis store, and you're like, yeah, nigga, God, you know, like, and he's like, man, things is all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the resale value on this purse, like, I'm cool, man. Yeah, man, I know we got to overthrow the government, but man, I, 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 we, I need to relax for a minute, man. You know? <laughs> but it's wild to think that, like, sometimes you have, you know, it's funny when certain things should bring us together and bridge us. Like, like Kamala Harris, yeah, you know, top cop. We come in, understanding she is evil. She's done no matter. And there's always this constant debate, you know what I mean? Like, we're understanding her history as a DA and all the and you know, all the various all the various initiatives and you know and our and prosecutions that have led to the imprisonment of many POCs, especially black people, especially black uh, and probably black men, and then looking at what she's done for you know the end of this truancy and she'll, and you're like okay blah 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 even with trans prostitutes and even hookers, <laughs> the fact that like she's like nah I'm not against I'm fuck hoes I'm not I'm <laughs> like nah you going to jail too wait a minute I'm going and it was sin. Dog, here's what's crazy. The fact that Kamala Harris, like, no matter how we want to look at it, some things, even when it's rectified, you're like, it's kind of like if you did your girl wrong and she forgives you, but she's like, yeah, but in 2019, you still did message that bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> what was all that high shit about? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you're like, we're cool, but I don't forget. The fact that she was going to put, she they actually would place trans prostitutes in a male population you know, that's, you're just asking for a death sentence. i didn't even know about that part but Jesus. i posted this stream like i this link this thread that i like which is dangerous to do sometimes because this if you're not always a political guy i think i made those i made some mistakes what's like, the biggest mistake you've made um honestly there i think there was like there was a video you posted of some guy like like following a lady that flipped him off or yeah, something. He was and on, then he uh, was like releasing merch the next day. And yeah. I was like, that's a little like le- less than 12 hours af- after you like hound this lady down who seems like she did cut you and try. What was so weird about that video is while he was c- confronting her, he would say, you cut me off. You gave me the finger and called me the N word. Yeah. But then when he was talking to other people, he would say, she cut me off. He never, he wouldn't mention uh, like the the racism or anything like that. Yeah. So part of me was like, man, how do I know that this guy didn't just get cut off and was like, I'm about to go viral with this bitch. She looks like a Karen. I'm gonna fucking, you know. But wait, I I because he was on me and James' show. Oh really? Yeah. Oh damn. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's me legit. and James have a new show we do where we roast Karen videos. Mm-hmm. In the first episode, uh, I forget the brother's name. Shit, if he's watching it, I'm sorry. 
I'm high as hell right now. <laughs> uh, is that I, I'm not. I don't do drugs. But uh, it's like I just want to put that out there because you can have an employer be like, you say you take drugs. You know what I mean? And like, is that, is that why your eyes all messed up at work? No, I'm crying at my desk. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to be doing case management anymore. <laughs> like it's like. <laughs> Ah, but I remember when he said second, that. Time out, time out. Yeah. Could you bring the mic down a little closer just to because it's cutting off your face in the video a little bit? Uh, yeah, that's good. All that's right. good. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, All cool. Right. Good. I All right. And I'm actually keep, I'm going to re angle the camera just a little bit. Sorry. This is the last little bit. Okay. You don't, you don't got to apologize so much. Oh, I'm, I, w I hope you can understand the power that you have <laughs> and that the I'm telling you, bro, you're a powerful young man. Quit saying sorry so fucking much. You didn't rape anybody, yeah, all right? Yeah, or if you did, I mean, I mean, it's like you know, you you will get canceled. I, know, I, use, uh, I use apologies like fucking punctuation. Yeah, but do you mean your? Do you believe in your apologies? Uh, I mean, like just now, um, adjusting that camera for you felt like keep I it was, dumb real, keep it real. Yeah, uh, that felt like I was causing you a massive inconvenience. Dog, you know, with yeah. whatever what you're doing. You're doing me a favor. When you're doing something for somebody else, and you're, if you're just going outside, if you're being really, uh, if you're taking liberties with people, sure. But dog, dog, I heard you say sorry 13 times. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I, there's a lot I'm working on. Like, you I was got it, bro. You, you're very, if you can look at, you know what it is? Look at yourself like you're 10 years your senior. Look at what you're doing now. Bro, I'm 43. I'm looking at you. I'm going to murder you, bud. Because if I would have had the smarts, if I would have taken my my inheritance money when my dad died, and maybe done something like this, I would be sitting. I would be sitting here in a goddamn bur. I would be sitting there in a incredibly constructed suit, linen <laughs> suit. You know what I mean? And while my driver just grows around the town, like doesn't. But now I'm just sitting here with a dirty jean jacket talking to some Arab kid with a red nose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, like, what had me like, because I'd been thinking about it for a while and it just, it, I couldn't tell if this was like professionally responsible or just like this weird frivolous yeah. vanity project because I miss stand up so much. But then um, Andrew Schultz was talking about how uh, everybody made fun of him for taking all of his like, you know, blow up money mm -hmm. and spending it all on a podcast studio. Mm -hmm. And then quarantine hits and guess who's still... You know, guess who's bigger than ever? You know what I mean? King. Yeah. I mean, those weekly uh, monologues and gets the whole studio. Yeah. I, what I'm saying, well, I had this boss, Mel Simmons. He had, he had this organization called Culture in the Corner. It was like one of my one of my good jobs after college. Um, I was I was working. At, it was a it was an art nonprofit. And remember, he said something. He owned. He would we would print T-shirts. He owned everything he had. He'd rent. The, he'd get spaces that were. He'd have partnerships with the local city government or whatever organization he's working with, but it was all his equipment. So he got more money. But then he always told me, whatever you do, own whatever you own everything because you get to dictate the rules. And I was like, and I always held on to that. And that's the chase that I'm on, even at 43, is that like I don't like I I have to work to fund my art. I'm a pretty good worker. I do what I gotta do. You know, whether it's writing for TV or if it's doing projects or if it's having to work a nonprofit to pay the bills. But the goal is to want to hurry up and to be the, the have the keys to my own castle, mm -hmm. because it's after a while it gets to you're, it did, you're like when you're not living the way you want to. It deteriorates at your will and start an idea of like a voice bills where it's it's starting to. You're asking. It goes from making questions to yourself to judging yourself. Yeah, you know I've I mean? been. Yeah, I've and that's what quarantine's so great. Quarantine's incredible. Like I made a post a little while ago that got me in a little trouble with. Well, it was two. It was two. These two, one sister came at me. The other sister was really educated, so she did it. Most educated people don't come at you directly on Instagram or Twitter. They just make some kind of offhand tweet or remark. You know what I mean? So, so it was. I was like, it's like, like if you don't use this time to create or uh, uh, create the life you want or make the art you want to create the, you know, to gain, get something out of it, become better. So you're going to look back and say, I'm dumb as hell because you're never going to get this kind of time again. Yeah. I, I used to, cause like there's, you know, there's so much bullshit Instagram, uh, like infographic psychology. You know what yeah. I mean? Like people posting, like, you know, it's like, you don't have to be like, you know, your productivity doesn't like define your worth or whatever. Yeah. And it's a bunch of people patting each other on the back for like not doing anything right now. And right. I understand that there's a lot of people who can't do anything, but it's right. like, it's not that my like 
self-worth is is like tied to my productivity it's that if i'm not productive i want to fucking die like it's like so i don't know it's weird but do you think it has something to do with the way you were raised because getting i mean i don't have the whole drop in like your back your background but it sounds like your family has a pretty pretty you know i think they do pretty well with their business and sometimes you help them out Mm -hmm. but you grew up with seeing self-sufficient parents right yeah i mean like uh like uh, I, I I've been I've been, I, I'm lucky I'm, I have a good relationship with my right. family and I was talking to my dad about this and it tur- I, for- I totally forgot like right out of college he actually like turned his apartment into like a recording studio for uh, some band friends of his and he was Same. making bootleg mixtapes of like American music and selling it to people and stuff like that and he he met my mom because he started his own company in Egypt and hired her <laughs> and then. Uh, uh, it got the company got stolen from him while they were on their fucking honeymoon. What? Like it, on some social network? There, there was a, there was like a hostile takeover thing that happened from one of his partners while okay. he was on vacation. Uh, so uh, my mom managed to land a job uh, in, in uh, uh, at Apple in mm-hmm. Cupertino, and uh, they came here super broke, uh, and okay. my dad couldn't find work for a long time. Uh, but then, uh, then they did. And what uh, did he do? In the in the middle of all that, trying to find work, was he going to school? Was he just doing our job? I no, he was just interviewing. He was uh, interviewing, and my mom was bringing home the bacon. He was interviewing for years. Uh, I think it was like a year or two. It wasn't wow. like yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So, uh, but the thing is, is like I don't know. Like this, the company that they're on now. This is his the thir- his third time starting one. Okay. And uh, I think I d- like in in comedy. I think I'm a better uh <laughs> like. This sounds so douchey. I think I'm a better like entrepreneur than a comedian. And no, stop that. Well, stop no, no, no. Well, I mean, I'll be, be- a better. How comedian. long you been doing comedy? Well, th- that's my point. I think it's excusable Come because on, I've been bro. doing it. Like, but but my point is is like, I do think I got the self starter thing from them because yeah. I started running a ton of shows because I wanted to give myself stage time. Yeah, and then it accidentally became a small business kind of. Uh, yeah. and then I just figured I could apply a ton of that shit to this too. Yeah, but you know it's yeah. funny. You're you're the of anyone in you cuz you're millennial. This would uh I'm actually weird. I'm in the I'm in the like so everybody says the millennial age stops from like 94 to 96. It like varies. Sometimes it's 94, 95, 96. I was born in 95. So I'm either yeah. the youngest millennial or like the oldest. I thought zoomer. it was okay, so I'm 43. So I thought if you were born I was born 77. So I thought that if you were born like 86 to 88 that's like kind of like you, that's. You, I, I thought millennials stopped at like early thirties. Oh, uh, I I think um, I think thirty seven is like the oldest millennial. For what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. or like thirty eight. Man, I didn't even know that. Fuck. I mean, now <laughs> if that's really if that's the age, if that's the cutting off part of point, that should make so many people, young people, well, people in their late thirties in San Francisco, so happy <laughs> because. You know, like when a person stops becoming like a considered a millennial, they if they if they don't accept it, they just they just start being like this succubus off younger people, and you'll see them at a cool bar, you know what I mean, with a hat, you know what I mean, of some sort, you know, really gets young girlfriend, they're really getting the sneakers, you know what I mean, gets whatever, like they become like junior hype beast. You'll see them outside of like undefeated. I feel like like. 60 to 70 percent of jordan owners cannot be trusted <laughs> you know what i mean like they're not that is <laughs> the funniest you should write that down yeah be- wow you don't understand that is so funny <laughs> because at this point a pair of jordan ones anybody can like wear them yeah for it- sure because it's not to say white people ruin it but it gets yeah, you can say that. i think you can definitely say that <laughs> I think also, like, I mean, the Filipino people did take a hand in also ruining Jordan. Oh, but, yeah. Here's my here's well, what black yeah. people understand. Filipinos. Here's, here's this great thing about Filipinos is that like they for some th- reason th- they're they're so swaggy. <laughs> you know, what I mean, the Filipinos are really the worst Asians. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because meaning the potential to climb up the Asian ladder more up to, to that top of the pyramid. Because Chinese is going to be on top. Mm-hmm. Japanese, you know, because Japanese that, like, Japanese 
at least in terms of how they immerse themselves in the cultures and mix in very well. They're like the cornstarch of Asians, right? <laughs> and then you get down to like Laotian, Cambodian, Thai, all that murky stuff. And then at the bottom is Bruno Mars. You know what I'm saying? Wait, he's Asian? He's, yeah, he's, he's uh, Filipino, Hawaiian, and like cocaine. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's what he is. I think he's mostly cocaine at this point. But like, but like Filipino, they're so dope. But the thing about it, they're known just for, like, they're known for being swaggy. Uh-huh. And they're known for possibly, I mean, DJs, supporters of the arts. Like, mm-hmm. like they're the, like they're the like if 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 entertainment was a person, if that per or not person it was a car, the car, like would be, a like a Cadillac and the, it'd be a black person and the hood ornament like the right there would be a Filipino you know what I mean like, <laughs> or or the weird bumpers at the end just like and you know, nothing or the or the fuzzy dice they're not always oh, they're part they they add on to it but not, but I don't understand how Filipinos have not risen up like. I don't like, honest to God, bro, if I said name five Filipino DJs, I could be like Shortcut, you know what I mean, Apollo, Q-Bird, you know, and Mix Master Mike. Da, da, da. If I said name two prominent Filipino attorneys, and can you if, name any prominent attorneys not involved with was, OJ? You know right? what? My first, <laughs> I'm so racist. My first name, my first thought was Jeff Adachi, you know what I mean? <laughs> and that nigga's dead, you know what I mean? I was like, wait, Jeff it? Adachi's dead? Yeah, he died. He got he got murdered. Did he get no? He had a heart attack. I am credited in his documentary, and I didn't know he was dead. Did I you did. do a set. No, <laughs> no, no. no. I uh, when I, I used to intern in movie PR when like just an indie like like a little indie agency. <laughs> okay. Here. And he had a a public. He had a movie called Defender. It was a documentary about him. Like yes. Yeah, yeah I'm credited in that. Yeah. Uh, you you're in the credits. Yeah, yeah. You're on IMDb. And like I legit I I put up posters. <laughs> like I didn't, re- I barely did. Anything. So you were like the bad boy street team. <laughs> Yo, I didn't, who killed him? What happened? No, he died. He had a heart attack. Oh, he had a heart. I think some he people murdered. said he was. It was like, you know, what I mean, uh, like because he was. He was. I mean, but I don't. That's alleged. Because uh-huh. at this point in 2020, you gotta say allegedly. You know, what <laughs> I mean, or oh, somebody told me. You know, what I mean, because I'm not trying to get canceled or <laughs> murdered by her, his son or something, right? But that he I, he came to a show. Um, what's that Filipino comics thing? Real handsome dude. He's been in a bunch of commercials. He's Bay Area. Um, I forget his name right now, but he did a show at Milk. And wait, are you talking about? A, you're not talking about a role for, right? No. Oh yeah, I was. Oh, I was like saying how I was wondering. Andrew, how, yeah. I don't. Even, I think Andrew is like. I was did, like, he's in commercials. And I think. I think he did like half a semester. <laughs> I mean, at like some Jay Z. Though this dude, I forget his name, but he's a good comic. But he, I think he's got more into acting and modeling or commercials. But Jeff Adachi was there, man. And here's the thing: people don't like, t- man. I think we got to start talking about this, man. Like how to have more pride in your city. You got to find the smaller communities that are bubbling up or really doing like, like I would say by far, the Bay Area has the coolest Asians. Yeah. I, 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 I have nothing to base that on, but I immediately believe it. Yeah. There's a yeah. feeling, <laughs> you know, now I think cool is all right, but I think New York has better Asians because they're tougher mm. because New York is such a, fuck you place <laughs> and when you meet like asian people that grew up they don't even talk there's not even like an accent it's just new york dude i uh <laughs> there's a uh, uh a famous big bazaar in uh, uh cairo called Khan uh, and um there's nothing but spit on your mic right now. <laughs> <laughs> i knew there was <laughs> it's, it's one of the it's it's a very fun one to say but uh we i saw this big red mm. tent and uh, I saw like a bunch of carpets through it. It's yeah. on some stereotype shit. And uh, I walked into it, and it's filled with Chinese merchants speaking Arabic in a perfect accent, better than I ever could. And it was like seeing like a dog meow or something like that. It didn't make any fucking sense. It was crazy to me. Is there? Any, but is there any kind of uh, similarities to the pronunciation of the words? Oh no, I mean it sound. If I was closing my eyes, I would have thought. Uh, maybe, oh no, like, yeah, they yeah. were just like straight up. Now I was like. Strict rich little impression, like yeah, I get yeah, it. It was, yeah, it was yeah. Perfect. It was perfect. I mean, and, and that to me was like, man, what are fucking, like, like uh, my cousins told me there's like one like really poppin' Chinese place to eat in, in Cairo, and it's yeah. ran by like 
a husband and wife that don't speak any Arabic and nobody knows what the fuck their deal is. And to me, those are the two f- most fascinating people on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, <Yeah. laughs> what, what, the, what the fuck does a Chinese person have to do in Cairo? <laughs> like, what brought you there? <laughs> that, that's what makes, and that's why we don't like saying it, but we feel it as white and black people. Like, Asian people are, look, be honest, they're the best. I mean, cause, <laughs> because they, because their survival instincts to, especially when they, I mean, people that come from any country to come to America or any, or vice versa, when you're going to any country and you're trying to understand the culture, the mores, the aesthetics, yeah, you will catch on. And within your own plan, you'll find a way to create a business plan or a survival plan that will work. But let's just like, there's like this in terms of like how it's presented and how good it looks. Doug, Asian people do a way of just like bypassing the bullshit mm-hmm. and sticking with their agenda and don't, and because. They're providing you a service they need, you need, let's say food. Food, they either they're helping you get fresh or they feeding you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need my shirt pressed. Okay, $3.99. That's kind of high. You know what I mean? Well, iron yourself, motherfucker, right? <laughs> All right, $3.99 it is, Chan. You know what I'm saying? I'm hungry as fuck. Well, Beef why, and broccoli. What, wh- I always wonder why uh, there's not a single American, or like, you know, I'm not going to say American, like uh, yeah. a single white-owned donut shop in this city. Right. If it is what, before Corona, it was probably on the way of getting torn down. Yeah. Like, I think the only non-Asian donuts shops here are like the weird artisan ones that cost way too much fucking money. Right. Like, Doug, like I went to a pop up uh, fancy donut place one time here in San Francisco, and it was a gentrified donut place. And it was just like watching people in the hood deal with like what. Especially the black men that are holding these donuts, they're like, dude, what is gay donut? <laughs> like, what's an elderberry? You know what I mean? <laughs> you're sitting here and you're like vegan. And we don't want that. We want it's so fucked up that because of pattern recognition or really how we there's permissible racism in some people where it's like, I trust this product because because history has shown me a Chinese couple that doesn't talk to each other and a child's running around make the best donuts in the damn city <laughs> yeah. and and it's got to sell something else yeah, yeah if you can sell donuts all right all right cool but you if you add a sandwich all right cool you know what i mean if you add some other food but if, if it, but the next step is just cigarettes behind the counter oh think, right no <laughs> if you if you can get fat and Get cigarettes, <laughs> but that, you know, and coffee. The three things every working man needs to get through the day while killing themselves. That is the best thing. It's like a it's like a cliff bar for men who don't care about themselves. Yo, for real, dude. Um, but like for real, like because like when you go to a very white owned place, and there comes a certain point that it's going to start. You're gonna start seeing their culture used in and if you're not aware i don't want no russian donut i don't know what's in there <laughs> what the fuck Yo, there's a there's a dope russian bakery on balboa street come oh, on i know the one yeah yeah, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't eaten there i just walked by and i never went in it because i was like I don't, I don't know what russian bakeries are about <laughs> oh my god dude the pierogies the pierogies oh, pierogies yeah. excuse me i've only had one of them ever and it was terrible but it was not from a, like a legit place oh no yeah, yeah. okay here's the thing about it. don't ever you got like most people who get a pierogi or pierogi have usually gotten out of a cellophane pack at like a corner store or they bought it from Costco. If you go to a Russian bakery on that or on Gary Street, oh, bro, it is no joke because it, first of all, the good pierogi, and I'm not a fatty fat dude. It's just like, I, these are just my memories. I mean, it's got to it's gotta bleed through the bag. Oh yeah, isn't that the cheesesteak rule? Like the Philly cheesesteak rule? That's yeah. From Fresh Prince, it's got to bleed through the bag. Yeah, if yeah. anything, you anything greasy, you got to give. It ain't bleeding through the bag. You know what I'm saying? And it, 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 yeah, you're you're getting you're getting cheated. You know what I'm saying? But but Russian bakery, there's a Russian bakery on Gary, like on the 2600 block. Now that's dope. Now that now once you get to that white people bakery, you it's gotta it's you gotta feel that the war has affected them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you gotta feel that they the great grandma stood in line for bread. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? You need to taste the generational trauma. Yeah, you <laughs> gotta taste the trauma. Good food has trauma in the family. Yeah. <laughs> Good. F- you can taste the trauma. You can taste 
the baby Russian kid having vodka for at two years old. You know, you what know I, mean? I know which one of my grandmas cooks better, and I know which one of my grandmas had a tenser marriage, and it lines up pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this one tastes like an arm grab. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can't have a two parent income, you know, what I mean? yeah. like, like, and your stew. You're like, mm, this tastes like harmony, you know. What I mean, there's not, there's not enough harmony in this chili, grandma. You know, what I mean, you had a bad marriage. This, like, nah, that's what's real, dude. That's why I don't know, man. That's why it's like, that's why it's so weird when you think about like things that are white owned and like what, especially with this pandemic. I hate to see businesses close. Yeah, it's but brutal. It's brutal. But then there's some like, you know, there's some that should shut down. <laughs> oh no yeah, yeah, yeah. trust and believe yeah. but i go i felt bad that the gap um spala market closed yeah but if there's no other bland white a representation of a bland white institution or black company you're like the gap even with kanye jumping on board you're like yeah who gives a shit but yeah but like when you see a like you know, Badlands and the Castro shut down. It's like, oh, damn, the Castro is like actually a unique place and they lost a unique place. Because yeah. I have a, my roommate is a, a gay Thai chef named Magnum. And uh, wait, wait, time, time, time. <laughs> TL, TL, TL. I hope you can animate my hand like, <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Hold on. I got to give you the Tony Robbins like uh, influencers. Now, wait a minute. Um, S tell me who you're living with again. Uh, I, hate to, I hate to interview you. He, that's my thing. He, right? Well, he gave me my haircut. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. good. Honestly, I have found that uh, Thai and Vietnamese barbers get it right the most often. Yeah. And then I'll get like a 60 to 70 percent success rate with black people. And then like with white people, it's Russian roulette. It's like really bad. But um, Russian. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I I legit I like what about Latino you know those I, I have I've yet to sample Dominican, <laughs> Puerto Rican Dominican I'll, I'll give that a here. shot um, but uh, um, shit what was I talking about? oh yeah all the fucking barbershops here are those stupid like the the gentrified white ones where they have like pin up girls on the wall yeah. you can have a fucking whiskey or whatever yeah because uh, they just they want to be mad men or whatever and yeah. I, would, I would go to a barbershop like that and oh, God fucked up my hair he gave me like an Obama Caesar cut and. Uh, he literally, when he, he was when he did the last little snip, he looked into the mirror and just went. He just fucking shrugged, and I and he, I yeah, and I literally I I didn't even know these words were gonna leave my mouth, and I was like, shrug means I get my money back, <laughs> and and then uh, the the manager was like this Latina lady, and she was yeah. like, hey hey come back like after two or th let it grow out like two or three weeks, come back I'll fix it for free, and uh, I came back two or three weeks and she oh. tried pairing me with the same guy and I was like, you fucking give me my money back right now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. but yeah, anyway, so Magnum, right? No, wait, uh, well, the haircut, I, will, I want to come back to it, but your roommates, give me your roommate name again. Describe again how the, that was very assembled. That's a gay word. Thai chef na named Magnum. Uh, and, oh, and so I keep like, because this has come up on pre the previous podcast. I, I, uh, his former roommate, who sub is uh, subleasing uh, to me or subletting yeah. uh, to me, um, he was the one who gave me backstory on his name, and I still need to confirm it with Magnum himself. But apparently, his mom wanted to give him a strong American name, and was also a big Dirty Harry fan. Uh, and I and that lines up real conveniently with a, a gay identity in in San Francisco. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, he, what's fucking amazing about him is uh, he is. Uh, he and a bunch of out of work, you know, fellow Thai chefs uh, are like starting their own delivery only, like Postmates only restaurant okay. or whatever. And I'm the fucking test kitchen subject. So like he cooks for like like I, I think I'm obligated to marry this man. Like he <laughs> he gave me a perfect haircut. Yeah. Uh, he, he listens to my problems. He makes me dinner. It's like it's everything I need. What? OK, let me get this scenario. Let's, let's let's bump it up a little bit. OK. Uh, well, first of all, let's hit this. First of all, uh, the mom wanted to give her son, who she didn't know was gay, uh, wouldn't know he was going to be a chef in America, wanted to give him a strong American name, was a fan of Clint Eastwood, and he carried a 357 Magnum. You're sh the guy is younger, the same age as you? Or younger? No, he's like, I think he's 33. Okay, so 33, to me, that sounds dumb because, like, 
to me, that makes things like she was into Tom Selleck, <laughs> Magnum P.I. <laughs> and if you look at Magnum P.I., he looks more like a man that is a gay man who thrived in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you named your son Mag. The, the coincidence, it's making my, my head implode right now. Cause, <laughs> and then it, his name is Magnum. And it also... It also implies that it sounds like he could have a big dick because he also has a lot of uh, merchandise branded nasty pig, uh, which I enjoy, like a nasty what? pig jersey, nasty pig. Slippers. That's his brand, nasty pig. Yeah, is that like yeah. a gay thing? I guess I don't know. <laughs> I gotta, dude, you know what's? Look, man, I know it's fun to laugh at homosexuals. I mean, that's what I do. That's my <laughs> hobby. You know what I'm saying? But and that's you know Sudoku's. You know what I mean? But like, gay people, we don't. I know, but no, but look, man, gay people sometimes are ridiculous because like the, the nicknames like like i got i got friends i grew up dudes i know that have names that just if you hear them you should automatically put them in jail and a jury would be like yeah why is he doing 20 years his name is mirage is is <laughs> mirage or kill a c you know what i'm saying <laughs> and like like <laughs> i uh <laughs> I, I remember um, uh, there was a dude I grew up saying slaps. Slaps. Yeah, because he would go. He was known for when he slapped you, you it felt like a punch. <laughs> and just the fact that when he got arrested and did two months in juvenile, and when they put him in there, actually he did no six months in juvenile. Just the name alone, I mean, he had to change his name when he came because the cop he found out the cop why he got arrested because he wasn't doing shit. The cop gets it. Who's that? Who's that? And the dude was like, "Is like, oh, that slaps." You know, and they're like, "Yeah, we have to arrest him." I mean, like, <laughs> you know, what I mean, what fourteen year old is going around named Slaps? You know, what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I guess like, but like the guy's name is Mac and Dirty Pig, Dirt, Nasty Pig, Nasty Pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to see what's the logo. It, honestly, it looks like if he in the Superman logo, but instead of S, it's like NP. Ooh, that's what. That well, that's interesting too because that NP is no short for no problem, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Which I'm running around Na the Castro. I mean, nasty no, pig might not be any pro uh, might be no problem, you know. I, I mean, <laughs> I'll say this: if I was on Grinder or if I was out there in the world looking to get to get dirty, what's my nasty pig is who I'm looking I, I, to swipe I saw on. A screenshot of a Grinder chat that was like, "Hey, you're cute. Do you like CBT?" And the person responds, "Cognitive brain therapy." And the other person's like, "Lol, no cock and ball torture." <laughs> what? <laughs> Once again, <laughs> once again, my passion railing on gay people, right? <laughs> and people say, "Kasim, that's wrong. You shouldn't find that. You should be a lot more sensitive." Then I get this mind fuck explosion by using CBT, which still sounds racist because that sounds something like <laughs> CPT, like, but they're like a flip around, like no colored, you know. I just black imagine being so well acquainted with genital torture that it's just a three letter acronym. You, you, you can't say cock and oh, torture. That <laughs> makes me hurt because I don't really like my balls being in pain. You know, I mean, like my balls suck like crazy. It, you know? uh, it, there's something about it that yeah. feels like a predator has a hold, like of a sense. It's of too much power. It, yeah, no. It's, like you it's just start like, hearing that Kanye music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's got to suck in all that power. You know, it's, the, I mean, dog, and I like it, but it's fun to watch because, like, sometimes those girls are going to town, like, like that. That's their million dollar baby. Like, this is my fucking talent, you know what I mean? And it's it's weird when they're holding like a push pop, <laughs> and they're just like, and they're just like a meat stick, like, <laughs> and you're like, because you can feel it. I remember one time I was up. I don't know. This might have been a year ago, man. Like maybe like a year ago. I was at. I was like. Man, I was watching. I was on a journey, man. I was like watching. I was, I straight up, I was in the bathroom and it had to have been 40 minutes just searching for one. You ever have that where you're just like, ah, I saw that. Ah, da, da. Wait, you're looking for what? Sorry. A porn. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was on like XNXX, and oh, which is like a dark place. <laughs> dog, I'm trying to find the more darker place because I, Tony Smart, he hit me in the one years ago that I still try to find. It was just numbers, numbers and dots and all that. But I haven't got like dark web. I haven't got to like levels of dark web to try and side. So I just do the meat and potatoes. You know what I mean? And all that shit. I, I might edit this out. 
Why? Don't, don't no, do no, that. No, 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 no. Why, bro? No, no, not what you said. What I'm about to say. Bro, don't <laughs> edit it out. Be, man, I'm trying to you be your freest self, man. Because what? Are you selling me undies or something right now? <laughs> like, or like some sort of like, no, are you well, selling blue chew pills? I was talking pills? about it with, uh, I think I was talking about it with Caleb, where it's like, I love podcasts where like, you know, people like, where comics like, don't hold back at all yeah. and then like push comes to shove i'm like do i really want to tell people about my porn habits i don't know why uh, you you know what for you being an online dater we're gonna find out about you i'm trying to tell you that any way to find what you want it's like tony used to teach me you can get a lot out of your set if you want to be an actor do act out if you want to be known as a writer if you want writing opportunities make the write the best stuff if you want to do characters like whatever you whatever you want to do it's like with podcasting, I've seen people get writing jobs. I've seen people get chick hot. With the women they they want to, they think they deserve, they finally get. Bro, talk your shit because I don't know shit about you, bro. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. If we're talking, I'm an old soul. I uh, I download and occasionally purchase porn. I don't do websites Impressive. at all. Uh, because oh. Yeah, I don't do websites at all. I just... Uh, huh. Yeah, because I don't... First of all, that says you got money. <laughs> the fact that you laying your credit card on the line saying, I'm really getting Debbie Does Dallas, and I'm downloading, <laughs> and I'm getting a zip package. Like, yo, no, you doing like, great. It's legit. It's like... It's like I don't need to see an ad of like Shrek fucking Kim Possible in the corner while I'm trying to watch porn. And... Like, I don't need it to be, like, 240p, and it's, like, the 30-second chunk, and you want the whole thing. Right, right. Uh, so, like, I I was part of these, like, you know, there, there are these sites where you can, like, torrent games and movies and stuff like that, and then yeah. there are, like, dedicated porn ones, and it's just, like, it's such a higher quality of, uh, of, of self-care. <laughs> it's such a better... It's it it I I I don't understand like but you know what I do have to rearrange hard drive drive space a lot and there oh you've got do you got do you got uh like in terms of uh kill do you got kill wait is it kill no uh a terabyte tire are you are you up to a bite uh well Keep listen your, okay listen come I, on man wait, don't listen, no 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 I've been doing I've had I've changed this this consumption uh. habit ha happened. In like 2012, yeah, yeah, and I don't delete a lot of things. I am, bro, <laughs> like standing ovation. I'm, dog, I'm telling you, Avian Awards, standing ovation, <laughs> lifetime achievement. Because every guy and girl will know there's those one you've seen. You click off, and then sometimes you close the window, and it's you don't remember the name. The dude's page, you don't know dude, what. I, dude, I fucking I know studios. I know, I know, <laughs> I know performers. I know, dude. Sometimes I listen to fucking industry podcasts. Yeah, yeah, because like, so I'm like I'm not even joking. Like, so like I listen to podcasts so much yeah. that uh, like if I'm doing something that isn't really like stimulating, it doesn't need my whole attention. I'll, I always have like a podcast or something on. And when you're like, when you like are trying to find the porn clip, like. You know, sometimes you start jerking off for no good reason. Like you could have yeah. skipped it. Like it's yeah, two yeah, yeah, yeah. p.m. on yeah. a Saturday. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's like I, you're not. I'm not really finding anything that's like lighting my fire. But mm -hmm. I, I still want to get this done. But I'm bored and I want to listen to a podcast. But I don't want to hear Mark Maron's voice. <laughs> you swear, <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, so yeah Boomer like, Liz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I found like I th I think her name's Holly Randall or something. She interviews right. like porn stars and. You funny she was totally related to Tony Randall. Like <laughs> from the, uh, yeah. So I'll just have one of those going on in the background, and I'll hear some like really interesting insight into the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can still browse and not feel like a creep because I'm looking up this lady who's talking anyway. You know, bro. Have like, you ever watched Dave's old porn? I I th when that was like it was on Showtime or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like thirteen or fourteen, yeah. and the idea of watching. Uh, uh, Por uh, like watching porn with somebody uh, and not doing anything about it just mm -hmm. fucking freaked me out. I couldn't watch. Here's it. here's an idea that I'm. I it's not I'm too chicken shit to do. It's like because I might not have access. I've been toying with this idea because I finally. I was always interested as a like I love researching and finding out everything that's black and ubiquitous about the internet, right? And and always staying on top of like what's make what's what are we talking about as black people and people of color? Or I guess or I guess the streets, right? Get street shit. OnlyFans has been always talked about for like, I'd say it's been the zeitgeist of black pop culture, underground black pop culture for like, I don't know, four years. I think maybe four. Years. I would have thought, I think I would have thought two. That was my guess. Okay. At least until I, it I think you're right. To over here. I think, I think because, yeah, no, I think that honestly, two makes sense because I think it became part of the conversation or the joke. 
You know what I mean? In terms of like just memes, you know, black memes or whatever. But like in terms of like when people like when porn and, and stars and like lady porn stars and like video chicks start hopping on and you get started like because I, I try to follow like scammers and like bl- not necessarily you would call them criminals. You know what I'm saying? on it Because like I listen to a lot of like. I'm not like Adam Twenty Two and all that shit. Like, I'm not looking for Adam. every anybody with pink dreads talking <laughs> about taking Zans and shooting a grandma in the face. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, I follow a lot of like different. Like, I li- I listen to like I like scammer rap. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, and when you do that, you get you get see who they like, who they taking pictures photos with. So I like was always getting into like OnlyFans, but I never really purchased one. But it was only until this year. I've hot one lady. It was just like because I was like, all right. Yeah, let that's me what see. it took. That's what it took for me. Is there was like one person I, I particularly liked their yeah. content, and then it wasn't showing up on the torrent sites. And then I looked up her OnlyFans and I was like, okay, you know what? Mm. I've been watching you for like four or five years. Yeah. You on? I should have given you twenty bucks a long time. Yeah, ago. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah if yeah. you because yeah, <laughs> what you're getting out of OnlyFans versus like if they do a porn or they do. Like give you a few minutes of this and all that. What they're giving you on OnlyFans, it's it's first of all, it's incredibly a lot more intimate. First of second of all, there is it's well, it's easier to access. That's I'm no you know, no geniuses, but like if you don't want you you can almost satisfy your your urge to you know splurge right and, right and just and go right there as opposed to be on some aggregate site where you're just like having to comb through and you're always experimenting with new words and like searches and you go there but you know if you can afford it it makes perfect sense but it's also that it's weird because like uh it's interesting because it you're, you're you know it's interesting because you're helping fund their life and and it doesn't feel so much like you're supporting rape culture. No, and like so I've been doing Twitch a lot lately, yeah. which is I, part of rape culture. Yeah. Right? Like it's <laughs> <laughs> the raping of the mind. Uh, I know it's not helping it, but <laughs> um I uh, I just realized and I had some inclination of this before I started doing it that you're just like a platonic cam girl for them. Uh like that's really all it wow. is. Like uh the, the the way you like that should be your new uh, title on Instagram comedian slash platonic, platonic cam, cam girl. I'm gonna write that down actually. But um, the thing is, is the way you get people like cause people random people will flip into your stream. Maybe they like the game you're playing, or yeah. like I don't know, they they just flip in. And the way you like get them to actually follow you is to like call them out when they join and be like, oh, thanks for joining, thanks for sticking around. We're doing this. You give them a little thing, and because. There's that like level of like interact like you start building this thing called a parasocial relationship kind of yeah. okay where it's like um they're learning a lot about you and they're getting to know you like your friends but it's a one way street right so b- basically in a platonic sense you have to make a bunch of people feel special so they subscribe to you and actually pay you and they can tip you and like like I think Max was talking about like. I don't know, like uh, he got a flat tire or some mm. shit and he got t- tipped sixty nine dollars and sixty nine cents by like one of his uh, like one of his lo- like one one fan who he always like, you know, it's like, oh, what's up, man? I think the guy's name is Dr. Hentai. He's like, what's up, Dr. Hentai? Like he's always like super nice to the guy. And sure enough, like makes that bank. And hey, Dr. Hentai, I know you're a part of my stream, too. I'm not saying you're just somebody to cash in on or anything like that. But I, I do feel like we are fulfilling some sort of service for you i what's cool about twitch is they're actually they actually watch this shit like yeah like once they actually like get to know you they are fucking it's the most supportive batch of strangers on the internet i've ever fucking seen in my life it's all positivity it's so weird and they just like they're saying hi to each other like like they're saying good night to each other before yeah. they sign off it's just the fucking i'm not really sure how we got on we we're talking about only no no but, but i it, like but i like talking me, about yeah. what how it's yeah. happening on the internet especially during quarantine yeah. about you know the ingenuity of creatives and i guess you know i guess uh looking at uh you know emerging uh personalities and and then when you find some way to like have some kind of person to person relationship and and let's say you earn some kind of income or you are some kind of internet you know celebrity or cat you know or some cachet whatever you know you're there and you're in this in this yeah this relationship you're building with people is 
I think it's really interesting. And now the challenges I've I've been wanting to think about or have people discuss is like, how are people being able to maintain just not even the monetization? It will come, you know, if if that's your your secondary goal. But how to, you know, find ways because I have seen. It seems like in order to engage and to have retention with audience, you need to be on two social media platforms. And have one, well, well, first would have, I think, first, I, think, I mean, historically, it would have to be Twitter or if you're old Facebook or whatnot. Or IG could be a two where it's like you're just engaging and you have a high ra- hit ratio. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And that's a, that's an incredible talent. If you find some way to be able to be uh, performing on camera or get a podcast, that's that's a, that's a two for, right? But what's interesting with something like Twitch is that, um, you know, there is something happening where I think a lot of people don't like admitting it, but uh, you know we all we all like uh, when things like Periscope came out or like Facebook Live, whatever, because we like voyeurism. Mm-hmm. And you know, with, with the whole camming, when I think about cam girls and Twitch people, the intimacy feels. Uh, I think it it becomes a lot more. It, I think it becomes a lot more interesting because those people get to have something that. It's, it seems like very an underground community. It know? is, yeah, no, that's and it's like the thing is, it's like I, I told you before this in Twitch. Uh, when you're done streaming, you can pass your audience right uh, to somebody. So me, Max, Butch Escobar, and Ian Kung to some extent mm-hmm. have been trading around the same group of people, and now they know about this. Like they know that like Ian and Butch are best friends. They know that yeah. Butch is like a vet. They know that me and Max are like the youngins, but they also know that like. Max was the one who like found me at an open mic and introduced me to like more people and stuff like that. And I think that's why they become so loyal is because it's like it's like it's just for them. You know what I mean? Like right. they, they've found this like it's almost like if you could fucking, you know, if you're a Harry Potter fan and you could fucking talk to Harry while, you know, plays video games or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't know. It's like but the reason I brought up Twitch in the first place is as I was doing it, it made me. It's not like I disrespected OnlyFans like, or I disrespect any s- sort of like porn work or anything like that. Yeah. But it made it such a legitimate vocation to me, you know? Yeah. It just like OnlyFans just seemed like this convenient thing that if you're hot, you could like kind of do on the side. But like once I started doing Twitch and like engaging with people and trying to keep them there, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm the same thing, man. I'm just I'm the same thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it's, what's crazy about OnlyFans is that. You know, like like two years ago, it became known that it seemed like a place where if you want to see your favorite dancer masturbate for fifteen dollars a month, you go there. But it it was you know as as of like there's a a ton of creatives and there's always a lot of recording artists, filmmakers, and the like. They're on there having like putting out premium content, and it, it's never discussed because it's not sexy to talk about. But and you know it's really interesting that it should be talked about more because like. Like when you look at all the different women who are other sex workers, dancers, or salacious people, or whatever, and they're on there and they're just you know performing, you know, and it's great. But it's interesting that uh, I guess when you couple the fact of how people hate women versus that they're the envy of people who are finding a income or secondary income by something that seems so natural, but yet. People don't have the gumption or the gall or the confidence to do, but they have found a, a, a way to bubble on this. I think people have a hatred for stuff, people that, who are making it off of like, like, well, OnlyFans, people who, yo, they're in, for black people, people that come up on Cash App, like, there's all this shit and like, Wait, you can just make money off of Cash App? Dude, I'm telling I you. I thought it was just Venmo. Isn't that all it is? No, Cash App is black Venmo. Oh, I, I know it's black like, Venmo, but like, are you saying that you can somehow make v- Cash App a job or or like? Yeah, I'm yeah. There, like, remember, okay, so like there's always these, I'm talking, to, uh, just Could you getting, bring the mic down a little bit? Just getting yeah. into people who just make money. Like, I'm always, because I'm a smart guy, but I just don't, and I, I come from Lakeview and I am just doing this kind of social service work. I'm always in the streets. I know f- people that are, people who owe me favors. Like if somebody really fuck with me, I could get you killed. Like, okay. you know what I mean? Damn. For $2,000, I got to have your old family <laughs> clap. You know what I mean? Like, and that's real shit. People don't, I'm, I always pray no one really fucks with me because <laughs> there's enough families and dudes. If I call Scooty <laughs> oh, fuck, and Scooty. give him your address at three in the morning, you will be He's dead. Go on over there with slaps and you're not oh, going to be Oh, if I call happy. slaps and Scooty, 
slaps and which I think was a rap group in the nineties. <laughs> <It's the, laughs> I think, I think the, they were on. I think they're on No Limits. Slaps and Scooty. I think it's the Urban Starsky and Hutch reboot, <laughs> <laughs> like Smiles and Style Star, like Slaps and Scooty, like that. No, it was a spinoff, the black spinoff, the Starsky and Hutch. You love Starsky and Hutch. Now get slaps and scooty, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and so like, um, yeah, man, like there's always this way that people are finding they're, they're able to find that, uh, they're the ultimate marketer. They're the ultimate financer. They're the ultimate, uh, they're the ultimate money maker. And I'm always impressed by them because like, I feel like, like, like if I was a Voltron, you know, what I mean, I've got the legs, I've got the arms, I've got the head. I just need that right leg. <laughs> I need that red lion, and I can come together and I'll kill everybody. <laughs> and the missing part, because like I have people that talk about hustle, and th- that's what the whole insta, the ins- like inspo porn. I get tired of, but I do find like the Gary Vaynerchuks and. And like, you know, like sometimes like even a band, like band man Evo, like for black people, like a lot of time they do reach a certain demographic people that have to understand what they just need that key to understanding the philosophy and the psychology of people and to get past all the bullshit and focus you, Mm -hmm. you know, they're the Adderall, they're, they're virtual digital Adderall to people. And that has sunk in this year for me. And I feel like just now that I've got money and I say, I can now I'm ready to get that Adderall and just attack. And I, and I, do you know what the renting of the studio co- coincided with is my first ever legit prescription to Adderall, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've I've had ADHD out the ass my whole life, and I've had a bunch of people recommend it to me, but yeah. I like drugs too much, so I just felt like it was like. Really? Yeah, yeah. I was just like you a I, coke. You a coke boy? Not a coke boy. Uh, Weed? Uh, yeah. I've I've been high since I was fourteen. Like with barely really a fucking. Br- you I'm, look I'm, like a. You look I'm like high a- right now. Like I'm high as. What? I, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever been around you. So I gotta get off this show. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess like I'm anti drug. It's like, uh, wait, really? you you really are you on like that limitless drug or something? No, like Bradley no, I Cooper. Just, I just like I, fu- I think I could you know I could fucking hang with Joey Diaz. Like I think we could eat the same edibles. Like Dog, I opened for Diaz yeah. in Sacramento. He gave me two death. Star- he gave me three death stars. Holy shit! And I don't, do- I don't, you don't. I thought you were like straight edge specifically. Right? I don't do that. Dude, is it is it a principle or you just not into it? I grew up with a Muslim dad uh-huh. and a mom who barely wasn't Muslim, but just principled people. And mm-hmm. my grandpa was a quiet alcoholic. And I think it brought a lot of shame on my mom's side of the family. Because my grandpa was a very he he, he was an emancipated minor mm-hmm. who smoked because it was the law when you're 13 in Texas. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, know what I mean? you just saw your oh, dad get hung. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah, nigga, give me some Marlboros. You know, I'm smoking like that little boy in Honey... In, what's that uh, Shia LaBeouf movie? Uh, honey, honey Boy. Po- honey Boy. Like, give me, a, give me a smoke, dad. God damn. Nigga. You got some bourbon? I just saw my, my dad get killed. Nigga. This shit's fucked up. But, like, I saw that because my grandpa was a real... He was always, I knew he drank because he had Corbell. He always had like Corbell in the kitchen. It was like this like bottle. It was such a pretty bottle. And I always knew what the alcohol was, you know what I mean? But I didn't know he was like an alky. He would go, because my grandma, well, I'm not going to go on these huge tangents. My grandpa's an alcoholic. So I grew up and I got, I grew up kind of close to faith. I grew up with real righteous black people. That's why it's like black excellence is something that I really, it's just not as weird thing to believe in our monarch or whatever it's like it's, it's a real belief because i've saw not knowing everyone's family and background but i just saw that it gets like living like my dad was in the nation they joined they become like true muslim i hate to say anyone watching the nation it's it's a cult right mm-hmm. uh, but like but yeah I, I just didn't have a taste for it i don't have it even like as a goof like my last girlfriend like she drank and you know, like, and as a goof, I did. And it's not I don't a drink, though. It, uh, it's weird. It's like I, the, I literally, I would drink for the extra two minutes at st- at open mics. Like that. That's the only. Here's the thing. Like, but every other, like, I've tried. I've basically tried everything that isn't like meth or heroin. Uh, right. Yeah, and like I did like a lot of pain pills in high school and shit. Mm. Uh, but uh, I figured because um, shit's been so. I've a lot of people have been having a better quarantine than me. Frankly, yeah, yeah you're uh, ripped, <laughs> but you're ripped, bro. Like, like, bro, when I met you, 
like you were sweatshirt city. You know what I mean? Out here. <laughs> like you just look like you were like like an actor trying to lose weight. Mm-hmm. Well, Man. I've I'm I've gone basically full eating disorder. Like like I call it intermittent fasting, but it's how like, much did you eat today? I had a salad. Okay, that's the right thing to eat, motherfucker. I don't know. Yeah. If, I don't know if that's wrong. Wait, what was in your salad? Because you can say no, lettuce, then no, I'm gonna call I'm the talking, hospital. It's like it's 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 kale and almonds and chicken and tomatoes and you know ding ding and, ding. Like, I don't know. I think uh, dressing or no some dressing? Blue cheese, uh, a little bit of, of dressing. I don't know. It was some mix. When did shit. you eat it? Uh, literally right before you got here, bro. You're yeah. doing gr- wait, whoa, wait. What did you eat this morning? Nothing. Water, I, coffee, I, water and black coffee. All right, water, black coffee. Now with intermittent fasting, I don't know a lot. I know that my boy Mateen was doing it. I I, I I fast for twenty hours and I eat for four, but sometimes I will do like twenty three hours and I'll just have one meal. Yeah. Okay, but and, the, the thing is, is it came from like I like I spent the first two or three weeks of quarantine trying to figure out how to construct the perfect breakfast sandwich. <laughs> I was just, I was just, what do you, I was, what do you own a bodega I, now? I, basically, What's going on here? No, basically I had a terrible start to 2020. Like I had a, like a, I had a really bad breakup. I had like, wait, did I, did we talk about that? Did you leave some chick? Uh, yeah, yeah. It keeps coming up and she liked the first clip that I put out of this. So she's going to fucking see me. Wait, wait, wait yeah. like, first of all, if if Murad talks about it, it's my fault. If you want to at me, <laughs> I'll get you killed. I don't give a fuck about you. You see me here. You think I give a fuck about you? I don't give a fuck about my health. I don't give a fuck about my teeth. I don't give a fuck about I'll get I'll get your whole family murdered, right? <laughs> so this chick, was this a chick when I met you, you had broken up with? Well, no, 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 no. That was that was a different girl. That was what was this girl. chick? Was it a white woman or a uh, woman no, color? So the girl, the girl when I met you was this Blapanese chick. Uh, wait, hold on, bro. Hold on. Wait, like T O T O T O T O T O Tro Owen Tro Owen C O T O. Wait, yeah. when I met you, you broke up with a black and Japanese woman. Yeah, bro. Do not interrupt me when I say this. I almost, I give a lot of compliments and they're always kind of muddled, but I give real, but they're always real compliments. This sounds confusing, but whatever. Uh, I'm gonna tell you that you're gonna make it. <laughs> In comedy, because if you don't know anything, because and that lets me know you're a real brother, <laughs> almost a real nigga, <laughs> because you got the ro- like rolling sevens and CeeLo <laughs> of P women of color, black and Asian. You got the Janae Aiko. <laughs> you got the Kamora Lee Simmons, who most people don't know is part black. People don't really know that. Okay, but that's, yeah, okay. Bro. And you left a, bu- they always look like they from the future. Mm-hmm. The eyes and the skin and the- look like that girl from that show about Teen Junkies. What's that show? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I just watched it. The Zendaya, the one that Zendaya's in. Like they always get that Zendaya look. Bro, you left a Blapanese <laughs> yeah, well. for comedy. Oh, it, well, actually it was kind of for like first And you off, were fat? Uh, I was, I wasn't, it's weird. Like uh, when I got. I, my weight fluctuates a lot, so that means you're fat. Any I, any time, like oh, my weight fluctuates. So no, that, no, no. But like, basically, I was I was just straight up fat for like my whole life. Was she fat? No, no, no. Uh, but uh, for no, no. One sec, one sec. Oh, Let me. God, I was. I was. Fuck I was it, just <laughs> crack my head over like. You walking around here with titties, and you had a real fucking Asian blapanese. I should murder you. I'm gonna get you murdered. <laughs> don't, I don't want to see Scooty on my front at my front door. Scooty gonna be here. <laughs> First, we gonna take this whole thing, like the end, the uncut gems. We are gonna take all the shit. Then we go. Okay, go, please. I'm going. But but right. it's like basically like like we barely had any chemistry. We just got along well enough, and like other parts of it were you know. Good. How was the sex? It was it was. Cause I think I think you fuck. Uh, Cause you you got like this really you got this like chipmunk energy, uh-huh. like this like you just seem to be like you got but a darkness, <laughs> like butt sex might be like on the mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, oh no, okay. So so everything was cool, but she just wasn't the one. Yeah, yeah, no, and and, and I I I realized that there were like because she coincided with when I was like also like I was. Like, I was way too anxious. Uh, like, I have horrible anxiety, and I was, like, trying to get back into stand-up for the first time in, like, two or three years okay. and, like, do mics again. And I realized there were some nights I was spending with her where I was like, man, I could have done, like, two or three mics today. Yeah. And were you – would it be – would you just be hanging out, just doing nothing? Yeah, we'd just – we'd be watching something. And my, my problem mm. with her was that she was just not an enthusiastic person. Like, on, 
Real, was she really hot though? She was. She was very cute. Of uh, course, that's why she had nothing. To, yeah, <laughs> the, dude, the hotter sometimes gets nothing going on, dude. You're like, dang, well, that's what, what that's what sucked about. So my bad start to 2020 is I found somebody who checked all the boxes basically. Yeah. Uh, but then it was a long distance thing, which you know. Where did she live? Chicago. Uh, what are you doing? Yeah, I know. It was because it was because we share a mutual group of friends that like meets <laughs> up for like tr- like a trip. Once a year, like or something like that. Now, what's her race? Uh, she's white, very white. Uh, Bro, yeah. here's what I'm gonna say, and this is not gonna be a popular opinion. If black men who are watching this, 2020 has been a horrible year for all of us as a nation and and the world, and you know, and it will affect us for uh, for for where we're at now and our future generations. It'll be in the new world. We don't know what's going to happen. But once we come out of this, black men, we have to learn. We've got to start fucking white women. Dude. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to go the other way. No. I mean, first of all. I thought you were going to st- say stop fraternizing with the enemy. <laughs> no. Fraternizing? No, no. Like, look, we need to kill white people. <laughs> oh, that's, and, that's still on the agenda. First, we have to ruin their babies. <laughs> yeah. We got we to gotta brown up these families. <laughs> Because there's nothing more awkward yet hilarious and heartwarming when you see a white family and a nigga named Darnell, <laughs> who's six foot three, darkening three in the morning, wearing a Christmas sweater with his either white, thin, or thick with the fat ass, and they came from their grandma, <laughs> and the father who's at the other end, because he's, you know, he's just thinking these thoughts like, well, our family's screwed now, you know what I mean? And he's there. Dog, there's nothing. Sometimes I'm I'm usually against interracial relationships, even the ones that I'm in. You know what I mean? <laughs> I look at her like I'm doing some fucked up shit. <laughs> My dad almost got fucked up in the face, dude. I'm doing this shit. I'm fucking you. Where are you from? And uh, I'm trying to tell you, but when I she see a brother with a white her. woman, uh-huh. pure white, mm-hmm. like I- Italian cream. Chicago, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Italians and black dudes. I'm not going to say it's better because, look, there's nothing better than black love. I Look, but if you're going to go ahead and disrespect the ancestors, go all out. <laughs> you know, there's no there's no flavor on the chicken, whatever. <laughs> the father's fucking the electric slide. Fine. You know what I mean? They're playing ignition all, they're all the time. But there is nothing hotter than with a white woman. Because there is something very weird. Like there's something. There's some. There's there's always that sexual chemistry when you have a white woman, white, a white Mm -hmm. woman that has made her allegiance and got to brown people and people of color, mostly Latino and black. You know, I mean, Arab if they want to get spicy, right? (laughs) And they're getting outside the circle of whiteness. But there's always something weird when you find out they're habitually going out with black people. Oh, then you're just part of the collection. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. you and you and you have to and you like, have to I, have the conversation. Occasionally, like I don't get, uh, uh, like I don't have luck on apps at all. I I look like I'm. Yeah, I heard you yeah, with yeah, that yeah. one with James. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I just I. You do- don't fuck with you don't fuck with Raya. What the, what's that, bro? Who, am I your <laughs> bagger Vance? Like, how am I? I'm your Uncle Phil or something. That is red- I'm not on it because I'm Poe. <laughs> All right, but the people I know who are on Raya, I mean, it's like any other dating app. I mean, it's still like it's Tinder for successful people. But you find I'm, a lot of people in the industry on it, and I know three dudes on it. And dog, the one dude that was showing me these profiles, like there's some dogs on there, but they got nice clothes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, is, is it literally? Is it just a one percent dating app or something? No, 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 no. I mean, I, not one, not one percent, but ten percent. You because you can get invited on Raya, and you could tell by some of the photos where, like, a girl next to her taco, we're like, okay, she's poor. I mean, right, you know, but like, but you just see. I like, live in a tiny ass room in the Tenderloin. I don't know that. Yeah, but that's by choice, bro. <laughs> yeah. You're. I'm looking at the studio, motherfucker. You, if you lived here. I would say you were a genius. <laughs> like you were like, you know, you were like Christian Bale in the the big short and you're just in your office brushing your teeth <laughs> and you sleep here in pod and everything. Like if you just cut all this out and showered and whatever to the gym and then you'd be your story, oh my God, would be incredible. But live with the way you want to live. Do what you want to do. 
just don't be gay. No, I just don't, <laughs> with all that whole thing. Well, it's like whole thing. It's like do what you want to do. Be who you want to be. Don't be gay. You know what I mean? And listen to Come Town. <laughs> That's that. But like, but it's like Raya, man. Because I've never been on any apps. I I thought about it two weeks ago because I was sitting there just like I was just seeing like folks just like you know because like I've hooked up since Corona. And it's some of it's been good, some of it's been like, wow, she had a weird eye. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the apps, I just I was in an Uber today watching my driver as I'm entering the car on Grinder. And I for a milli, 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 a milli, a milli, a millisecond, <laughs> right? I was like, damn dog, they should have that shit. But for dudes that don't want to get fucked in the butt. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Like that a straight dude, right? That reminds me. I, I was smoking weed with uh, uh, my low life high school friends. Yeah. And uh, one of them was real fucking stupid. And it, we, it was like 100 degrees. And like, you know, we're high schoolers, which means we don't get to smoke indoors yeah. anywhere. You know, we're just finding like we're smoking behind the 7-Eleven or whatever the fuck. And he was like, dude, they should invent a machine yeah. that makes breezes. And we were like, you mean a fucking fan, Luca? <laughs> like, <Bro. laughs> and it reminds me of like they should make a like a grinder a grinder for people who don't like getting butt fucked. <laughs> that would be the whole. That would be <laughs> that would be the catch. I tried line. field. I tried putting What's myself that? on field. It's just, three- it's like for people looking for just hookups or to add you to like their threesome. Which I'm not about that. I'm not. I don't want to. I think. Um, What's that comic's name in L.A.? She ah, oh, she writes for Vice and does a. She told me about the uh, the three. Okay, I think that had been it because but, she was doing three ways, and she actually, I think, we almost found a dude. Like, dude, like she went through a three way, mm-hmm. like. But field is like you're trying to just hook up. But is that the whole I, thing? I don't want to absorb like another couple's whole fucking like. A, mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to fuck with another dude in the room in any context. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like. If like I, if they were like two chicks or something like that, they're still like I don't want to be in your couple shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah, man. Like it'd be one thing if if you like were at a party and you had like two friends or something like that. But when you check when you go on field, you know a sentence I saw a lot on field what? was uh, happily in an open marriage. How happy are you, really? Because you're you're looking for hookups on an app during a pandemic. How happy okay. is that open marriage? I'm gonna be real with you because you're a young boy. Oh, am I naive as shit? It, Look at your fucking smile, bro. Okay. Like it's like you get such a I fuck with you. And it maybe it's not age. Maybe it's just where our consciousness is at. And it's not it's like I'm looking at not the enemy. I'm just I really feel I think you're great. Okay, man. <laughs> I've never been at three. I've been offered it I, three I, times. I botched one. Oh, wait. Yeah. Fuck what I was about to say. What? Go into that. What, uh, what I, happened? I was uh I was going to uh I had met basically. I had my own group of friends, and I met this girl. Just pl- 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 what kind pl- of group of friends are you like? Oh, just like, my college buddies. Just you okay. Know, yeah, yeah. Where'd you go? Uh, University of Missouri. Okay, this uh, sounds good. Um, and I would met this uh, girl who is. I said this on the last podcast. Uh, she's like like five ten, five eleven. Which when once you get to that height, I don't even sexualize you anymore. Like yeah, because I'm five seven. Like it's just not. Yeah, gonna, all you see is. Yeah, all I see is <laughs> all I see is a person <laughs> <laughs> and a volleyball. You know, yeah, yeah. it's like that. Uh, but um, she uh, would invite me. She had her own little like. What was her race? White, white. Oh, all yeah, uh, right. Uh, and she had her own group of uh like friend of like girlfriends and we would go and were they I, also 510 or were they just all no 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 she was the, she was the, the, the tall. tall one yeah um and uh i never went there with the like you'd go to a party with the like something in the back of your head of like i should try and get laid at this party or something like yeah. that but i would never go with that mentality uh over to, to that house it just didn't you know I, I just, it wasn't on, on the mind, which meant I was always on my A game because <laughs> I wasn't thinking about yeah. anything. And then one time I went there and I was on some Xanax and I was new on, I was Ooh. new to Xanax. Oh, uh, okay. And I, uh, these t- two of her friends uh, came up to me and they were like, oh, oh, like, like it was after the, the night had been going two, on. Uh, two other white women came yeah, up to yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. they came up to me and they're like, hey, Murad, are you like on something? And I'm like, yeah, I'm on Xanax. And they were like, oh, can we have some? And Xanax is like 
five bucks a pill. It is is depressing how Yeah, cheap like it is. when you watch it on Euphoria, you're like sounds like Xanax is just like buying Skittles. You're like it's like hella it's, cheap. I like I don't understand how much of it is in circulation that it could be so cheap. It's yeah. insane. So I was like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Take it. And like I said, I don't have sex on the brain at all. Mm-hmm. And then like 20, 30 minutes later, the same two come up to me and they're like, hey, Murad, can we suck your dick? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> like, I was still like, I was told like, I just had, I just had my first girlfriend ever. Like, I didn't know shit about girls. I was like, I was, I didn't kiss a girl until I was 18. I was all like, right. uh, and I had this thing in my head of like, my dick's not going to work. I'm on Xanax. <laughs> and, and then I was, no, like, yeah, and then I was yeah. like, I also am about to transfer and I can't say no to this because I don't know if this will. You're end. about to transfer colleges? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you about to go to? Uh, USF. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they <laughs> brought me in and uh, I fucked up because it was clear I was more familiar with uh, Xanax than they were. Yeah. And I should have just been like, this is a horrendous idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what happened was like, like, I don't know, we started making out or whatever. I couldn't get it up. And then one of them was like kind of being like accusatory, like they weren't attractive enough or something. And then she was like, were they attractive? Yeah, uh, they were. They were. I just fucking couldn't get it up. I was on a bunch of fucking drugs. Yeah. And, and uh, then she one of them was like telling me to hook up with the other one while she watched. And then that made her uncomfortable. And then it was all. And then they like changed pace and they decided to tie me up. Which, like, that doesn't do shit for me, but if it got their engines running, I don't give a shit. Do, do what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, and then they were, like, fucking dripping candle wax on my chest and shit. And then I black out, and I wake up, and I think I'm still a little tied up, and I have candle wax on my chest. And when you black out on Xanax, it's not like when you, like, when, when you black out from drinking, there's still some perception that time passed. Like, yeah. when you wake up, you, you understand you went to sleep. Uh, but on Xanax, when you black out, it's like, Blink, you're awake, 14 hours passed or something like that. It's in, you just lose. It's like being, it was like, I, I can't even fucking describe it past that. But basically, I, wo- I woke up like two hours later. Yeah. I didn't remember what led up to me being in that bed. All I knew was that I was tied up and had candle wax on my chest. And then I let myself go. And then I started putting the pieces back together. And it turns out that, and I found out years later, the reason they left me, I thought they left me alone because I passed out and they got bored. Uh, they set the bed on fire with the candles and had to go put it out and then passed out in the living room. So that was my one ever, th- uh, th- my first ever three, my only uh, threesome experience. So you, and, and that, oh, this I really might edit out. The, the creepy chick in that situation yeah. is the one I broke up with at the beginning of 2020. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought they were both white. Yeah. He said she was Blasian. No, 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 no. The, uh, the one that recently the, the, the Blapanese girl, that's when I first met you like yeah. a year and a half ago. This new one. 2020. You... Oh. Like the, the breakup at the top of 2020 yeah. uh, was, was wow. botched threesome girl. Um, well, why, why? We brought Wait, up... the 5'10". No, 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 no. 5'10 oh, well, is oh, our mutual no, friend. No, the Zanny girls. The Zanny girl. One of them. Zanny one girls, of the Zanny, Zanny girls. girls. One of the Zanny yeah, girls. Got it. I got it. The at- is, is the at- Italian white. Well, Italian, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that was very country. Italian white. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, so here's what here's a detail that I don't want to overlook. That you, man, she she liked a couple of these clips. I'm fucking nervous, man. Why are you nervous? Huh? Why are you nervous? Uh, because the thing is, she was really she was she like, so so anyway, the reason why my year was so bad, I can't remember why we were talking about like my. 2020 started out terrible. Your 2020 started off where because you had a breakup. Yeah, and it was I like, was I w- confused about what woman because I thought. It was when I met you, I met you in 2019, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I didn't know. Maybe you got back. Together. I didn't know your whole story. I haven't oh, seen you yeah. in a while. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know you had a new chick yeah. or woman. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't know you had a recent breakup. I know that James alluded, but I know he was yeah. trying to do like the, oh, you know, trying to cover it up. But now I got confused. But now you brought me up to speed. And then you got the Zanny party, the girls, your dick goes flat, <laughs> they leave, bed almost goes on fire, you got candle wax on you, you go to sleep, you time travel. And then years later, years. years later, we go on a trip with our friends. Yeah. And uh, like all our friends drove up, like like we went to Yosemite, mm-hmm. and uh, all of our friends were like drove up from LA together. Yeah. Like, and everybody who was from out of state like flew into LA and drove up, except her. She found a cheaper flight through SFO. So I picked her up and we drove up alone and like. I told like I, I liked her already, but I was like fucking completely in love with her. First time in my life I'd ever like actually felt it. 
Yeah. Uh, and she felt it too. And what's crazy is I think she made her uh, like, I'd literally never been more attracted to a person in my life. She's right. just smoking hot and super funny and yeah. very like stimulating. Uh, and she was the one who made it clear that she was into me. So it was like a fucking fairy tale to me. Yeah. Like the girl I'm most attracted to I've, uh, is the one making moves or basically. Yeah, that's all. I, yeah. Yeah. If a guy gets that in their life at least once, <laughs> yeah, it feels great. Uh, yeah. So and th- we had such a great weekend. Uh, and the thing is, this ties in with <laughs> the Japanese girl. Uh, she was interfering with like comedy too much for what I was getting out of the relationship. Yeah. Uh, but with this new girl, uh, I I felt super strongly about her, and I like we o- we would see each other once a month, and it worked out with my schedule perfectly. So were I you, was were you texting? Yeah, we were texting, like call, no, no, call no, no, her no. all the time. Were you dealing with other women? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I even suggested because it seemed like neither of us were going to move to each other's city. I was like, this should probably be open. Like it doesn't matter. How like, does she, she's like, no. And she was like, no, which made me like her more. Cause it means, you know, like she's really into it, like yeah. it really into me or whatever. But then she basically over the course of it, like it was just like a very, you know, it's not it fucking long distance sucks, you know? Right. And she was like looking for a way out of it. But like, didn't have the balls to end it herself. Wait, was she start arguments or something? Yeah, or? she'd lash out at me over bullshit. Like, I remember she got mad at me on her birthday because she would like alternate. Sometimes she would crash at her mom's place because it was closer to her job, or yeah. sometimes she'd go back to her apartment. So yeah. I ordered her some expensive ass edibles arrangement, and I had the gall to not know that she'd be at her mom's and uh, she, but not her place. And somehow that meant I was like an asshole. Like, because my expensive ass present didn't go to one of the two. And th- like, shit like that would just keep happening and happening. And then she, like, kept inviting me and uninviting me to this holiday party. Uh, that I, uh, she was like, and I was like, I was visiting her in That's December. So and she was like, I just don't know. Like, cause she seen me in social context yeah. and I'm like loud and like I talk shit and yeah. stuff like that. And I, uh, but she told me to make plans with a friend in town just in case she didn't want to bring me oh. and and i i remember i was over there and i told my dad that and he just went she's cheating on you get the fuck out of there right uh but i i didn't even suspect that what i suspect is that maybe she did have her eyes on somebody else and yeah. she was getting like fatigued with the thing yeah uh but she just wouldn't end it herself. and have you ever had to dump somebody you you still were like crazy about yeah, that's yeah, kind of, yeah. It's, it was it, I. So it's like I got all the emotional rejection. Wait, wait. Have I had a dump somebody else? No. It's fucking hell. No. It's fucking brutal. It's 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 like it's just you know. It, it, it was awful. It, it was just it was real awful. So you had to end it. Yeah, I had to end it because I I hit a point where I was like, dude, if my friend came up to me and gave me a full list of everything that this girl did to me, mm-hmm. except it happened to him, I would shake him and be like, get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Like, and I just knew I, like, I was losing respect for myself. Yeah. Uh, so I had, uh, I had to bail on it. And then like from January through the beginning of COVID, like I had like my car broken into like three times. Right. I had like every notebook I'd ever written, like every set list in taken. I had like a, 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 a family friend got murdered in Egypt. Like I, yeah. uh, the, uh, I was gaining a ton of weight because I was so depressed. And then, like, I fucking I blocked her on everything except Venmo. I forgot Venmo. And I saw her, like, pay somebody with this really flirty note. And sure enough, like, and I was about to look the guy up because I'm jealous. I was about to type his name on Facebook. And then I was like, I'm going to type his name in on LinkedIn instead. And yeah. sure enough, it was a fucking, su- like, a coworker of hers or something like that. Yeah. So I went into quarantine like super overweight, uh, lost comedy, lost all my friends because of quarantine, lost my girlfriend. I know she's with somebody else. I don't know if there was like overlap or, or anything like that. And uh, I was just like, I if I didn't make this, I was going to fucking jump off a bridge. Right. Uh, and like, and that's what fueled like, you know, the weight loss and the fucking, and because it's like, I can't, I don't. I'm, I'm. It's weird. I don't know how I got on this uh, tangent, but it, it's just like. I, it feels like the only cure for what's what's going on right now is to like work as hard as I possibly and that's can. This this arc in your life and this, or your story in this chapter in your life. This arc, this single quarantine. Fucking, 
I've never had th- this bad a time in my fucking life, man. I've really, I've. It's been brutal. Yeah, it's, it's been. Like Absolutely hearing great. you makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I, I overexplain and a lot of my no, guests. I'm fucking like, with I'm fucking with you. Yeah. But like, no. But here's yeah. the thing about it: how you're going to come out of this. A lot of us have. A lot of us are living in theory. A lot of us are afraid to live in practice. Mm-hmm. And I know that sounds like something you read, but I have met enough people who, in their own way, have told me that. I, I mean, I deal with like social services, so I like I have to deal with a lot of people who just bullshit me, and also I bullshit myself on certain things. You know, what I mean? I've overcome a lot of that this year, but I think the lot, the one thing that you see for yourself, man, is like, you know, the word is delve. The der- you delve as far as you can into your in terms of what could be your emotions or it could be your current state, but you have to delve or into the goal. And you're at the with within that you're going to get to these ridiculous points of like, you know, of like grandeur, you know, goal setting. You know, in terms of like, uh, you're in terms of your depression, and then, but also like, within that you guess you guess you get you it becomes really absurd, you know, because you're going to get through so many different levels. Like first it's going to be sorrow, and then you're going to get to a point of resiliency. Then there's going to point out of questioning, but then there's an action. But then between all that, you're just, you're having these small moments. And a lot of time when people do success planning or life planning or mapping, people tend to think it's going to be these huge, huge magnanimous moments. And it's not, it's these smaller things. I remember my old therapist, Max, told me about how it really hit me about like, how small things become big things. And these are really things we always know when we read and we see a whatever, some shit on your boss's wall with a with an eagle soaring that says progress. You know, <laughs> you know, you're like, this guy's an idiot. But as I really try to get de- you know, become like really make strides and like getting my my shit done and being appreciative and, and congratulating myself, I have to get I have to delve. Delve deep into my hatred, my my depression, my self-loathing, but knowing that I'm doing that because that is a voice that's helping me push me. Like right now, you made this studio. Brother, I have been, I've started seeing people starve in this, and it's never even this good. The fact that you're finding a way to speak about your experience and to be dualistic and, and I mean, you're in your, Thinking and in terms of your, in terms of, uh, in terms of what, in what you're accountable for, you know, I mean, uh, it's incredible what you're doing and cause you're using your resources and you're no dummy. I've known you for a little while and I don't see you much because you know, you're kind of annoying, but like, <laughs> but the times I hang out with you, brother, it's really cool. Those three, four minutes I hang out with you is really cool. But, but knowing that like, bro, like doing like, yeah, with the friend dying, man, like the woman, you know, like you're with, you're working, but you're you're really having a good relationship with yourself yourself because I grew up in a loveless house. Oh no, hey. uh, parents together, black divorce, stayed together in the same house for. I, it's hard to think about like what, but the question is like, why would neither of them leave? Because it's lack of resources or just say, like, you know, maybe not having the best relationship with yourself or you know, fear of the unknown, and it and it really it really tore on them, wore on them. And so, like, even with me, it's like I have – so I've had to, I had to really work that out in the last few years, like, looking at my relationship with uh, uh, with, uh, with people Has, has a lot of that happened during quarantine? Because me and James were talking about how we think about ourselves just, like, the month before quarantine, and mm-hmm. we might as well be thinking about high school versions of ourselves. Because, yeah. like, I think we both related in the sense of, like, there was a bunch of stuff in our life that was completely on fire and burning to the ground. Yeah. But comedy was going well enough that we could just keep doing that and not really address everything. Yeah. And then as soon as comedy went away, all I had was, was like, everything fucking burning or whatever. Have, like, but, but I, you know, you know you're, you're <laughs> a more fully formed human being. No, I'm not. No? I'm st- <laughs> I, like, I think in comedy, it's like Jerry Seinfeld is like, the amount of time you've been doing it, like, is, is, it, you, it, display, it surely shows your maturity level. I've been doing this, like, almost 13 years and some change. And it's like, I'm still, like, the way I think about things, I still feel inadequate. And even, like, how I kind of, you know, trudge through society and having to deal with 
people and levels of power and, you know, and different gatekeepers and how I relate to people with power and all that. Like, yeah, man, or anyone has dominion over me. Like, I still have a way of us, like, it's very stressful for me. So, like, I'm no, I'm no better than you, man. I mean, look at this. Look, I'm very impressed. With, like, it's really, I've always been impressed by you, but I'm trying to fight the urge of being even more impressed. Like, <laughs> because you have equipment. Like, and you know how to use it. and But you know it, but your skill, as I don't even want you know, you've really grown since I saw you whenever the last time I saw you at that fucking bar, <laughs> or the, that show. What was it? Boozland? Or Boozland. It might yeah. have been. It might no, have been. I saw you at no, Boozland. Uh, Dobbs? Was it Dobbs the last one? The restaurant one in Hayes Valley? Oh, yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah. It shut down. What? Yeah. Bro, yeah. that night was what? Because that was such a good place bro it was know, i too and it looks like something doesn't change it looks like booze land is going to be soon to follow uh, i tell you yeah. you know how to pick a place man yeah like oh i i legit i wasn't i wasn't making a full-time living from a ticket sales but i was paying rent like i wasn't getting utilities what? or transportation or any of that or insurance or anything yeah. but i was doing uh rent and i fucking but the thing is, is I'd been like bumming with family while doing that. Yeah. Uh, so and I didn't for wait. Like, you were bumming off your family. Yeah. Like I was living with my sister. You know, like there was okay. there was like I. That, Where did your sister live? Uh, Bayview. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um. And uh, but the thing is, is because I'd been doing that for a year and a half, uh, and I hadn't formed like an LLC or anything. I got fucked on unemployment. Like I didn't qualify. Uh, or anything uh, so like heading into quarantine all those other th bad things that happen well, and i'm making no money uh and i, I were I, you I, saving any of it uh not not uh not a, oh so you was just partying and living yeah well no i mean honestly sf after you pay rent there's so little you can put into your savings right 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 that i kind of had the attitude and it's you know a privileged shitty uh, why am i i always have to fucking push myself down before i say something i actually believe Ooh, uh, growth moment uh, right there. Okay. <laughs> How does that make you feel? <laughs> um, but I was of the mindset that, like, with how little money I was making at that point, saving mm. it wasn't. Uh, I should focus on making more of it, not right, right, right. You know, on, on on saving it. And uh, I had signed a contract with Punchline for like a monthly show, and I I put a little money to the side for that, and I ended up putting that money into this because you know that show never happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not. Yeah, how did we get on this? I don't know. Grow. Oh yeah. yeah. So y you, I was asking you if you've experienced, if you feel like a different person since quarantine. Definitely. Started. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I because you know it's funny. I feel very. I feel a, a lot. I a lot. Of, I feel extremely not just. I don't just like say fail. I guess lucky. I feel. I've always known that I work as a nonprofit, right? Mm -hmm. After coming back from LA and just having to get reformat, like you know, have the from working in Hollywood to coming back and like just landing back in nonprofits, which wasn't the plan, but you fund your art. You have to change your perspective. Yeah. Line, right. And when Corona hit, you get started seeing people just can't work and I'm an essential worker. And so, and I've got, and I have a free apartment. So like, I just, I'm saving money. I'm saving mm -hmm. money. And I don't go crazy with the spending. I mean, I mean, I wasn't frivolous either. It just, it just didn't. I just didn't have much to save. You know. No, I, t yeah. I totally understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but here's the interesting thing: is that, like, you know, like, you have you have the confidence and the intelligence, but you have the confidence, but you have, I think, uh, you you know, you have acquired, uh, you've acquired in a short amount of time a lot of wins, which is quietly educates you about your abilities. You're able to accept information, retain it and, and go and access it, access it for inspiration, motivation, you know what I mean? Whatever. And you know, when I, however new ways you want to formulate new ideas. And that thing has been really dope to see because you, you could use all this. You have a studio. Like, we see all these ads about learn to make podcasts into some ugly balding one, like make fifteen thousand dollars a year. And you're like, we're talking about what? And you're like, and you think, but you see that like you you figure it out. You have the space, and now you're going. I feel it. You're gonna figure it out. So, but with quarantine, it's like because your back is like literally your back is against the wall. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, and you and however you're gonna come out of this is because you're using your time, but. Also, it's effective because everyone's available. 
if you that really was the, that was the main thing behind this it was like i i can book anybody on this right yeah 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 it book it at but it's also like you know a big thing like how do you go and invest in yourself i always look at that whole mark maron thing like where it's like well going going for broke being someone that was like a comics comic and you know, I took some setbacks, but then got into the podcast. Didn't know how it was going to come out, but he knew he had the talent. He knew there was something there for him. And this is incredible, man. Knowing that, like, how you're going to see yourself grow and knowing that, like, if you jump all the way in. And I'm because I say this as a person that has great ideas, but sometimes it's had a problem starting my own orange. But even though, like, now quarantine has been good because it's the fact that, like, I'm taking, like, I, like, I'm in this like connect with the writers and I'm learning, I've, I'm using the class I take, I'm writing a pilot, a second pilot. Mm -hmm. And I am now doing that. And now I have a new show at James and, you know, I've learned a lot from working in television to like really work with James about how to build this show properly. And now getting this, figure out how to work this. And like now knowing that buying this equipment and new equipment, like, you know, just for to pod, cause everyone's been always asking me, and it's just the fact of like, I've always been reluctant about, I never like, cause you never have a lot of money. I've always, I've only most money I ever had was inheritance and then making money for writing for television. Mm -hmm. And then coming back in nonprofits, it's like, you know, you don't, there's never any money in there, but now I'm making, I'm making You're and saving, saving money. Yeah, yeah. And so, but now it's to take the risk. Like, instead of just like using uh, ex-girlfriend's iPad, you know, it's like, you know, and I need to go ahead and buy, I'm going to like this weekend buy a lot, like uh, this and I have the equipment and just do it G because people want to see you win. People want to see me win, but there's only so much time that they're going to be like, I don't think he really wants it. So that's why, and, it, that, and that's why it's what you're doing right now, being involved with Twitch and being on it. It's like, this is the point, man. Like, People can get out there because you're a hero to a lot of us comedians, influencers. What we're heroes. We're the paper, like paper tigers, or like paper heroes of people because you're putting yourself out there and finding a way to entertain, but yet grow. That's what you think about podcasting is, is is. But I just think that within that, you're finding your community or sub community, and there's this. And if you find a way that's you can authentically market and angle yourself to be to, to attract people. I think that's the big the big winner that coming out of this is like is that for everyone is figuring out how to find their community. I don't even call it an audience. But if you figure out yourself, if you figure out and trying to eliminate like grief and doubt and shame and a pro new process of living, but if you figure out like if you come out of this as whatever you want to be, like Angela 2.0 or whatever, Mark. 3.0 or Samantha 1.5, whatever it is you're going to be, you, you can you just hold on. Or, and the growth doesn't have to always be, you you came out of this with a bunch of money or you got ripped and shit. It's like, it wasn't until this doctor, this assistant this doctor to let me know, like, look, this is incredibly damaging to people. Like, even if you were making your money through unemployment, but just how your life is halted and just... Your your habits are being stopped. It's like freezing the snow globe. If you stop it, this is what some people live for: going to their favorite restaurant once a week. Because there's, it's not just the food. It's just like your, it's your, it's your place of solace. It's your place of happiness. I mean, if you can come out of this and deal with this, mm -hmm. you know what? You won too. And that's the thing about it, man. I'm really happy that comedy stopped. Yeah, I was gonna ask how you were missing it, but I, I feel fuck. I, I, I don't feel give like a I've, fuck. I've I've seen statuses from you saying as much, which is so interesting. I don't to give me. up, man. I've been doing this for a while. James doesn't miss it either. Well, I think he no, no, no. James, James definitely misses it. Is James is missing? I, yeah. I I logged on to his Zoom show last night, and I could see death in his pupils. I mean, like <laughs> because those Zoom shows are I, brutal, dude. They're brutal, dude. And look, they are fucking brutal. I saw two things that made me feel so bad for comedy. I saw my boy Steve, Stephen Fury performing. He he opens for Burt Kreischer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on fucking a cra the, the craziest tour in comedy fucking history. If Bert. he doesn't die, <laughs> which he should, <laughs> if he should, because he's on a bus, 
just being, I mean, that many white guys, you're going to catch something. You know, I don't know, like a new form of Corona, like a white Corona. You know what I mean? Like, it's like like white Hennessy. It's not that good as Hennessy, right? Is and it white Hennessy? Yeah, it's called Hennessy White. It it's seems like, racist. It's like Pepsi Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get you drunk, but you still feel empty. You still feel dumb <laughs> drinking. It's like clear gravy. You know? It's, yeah. it's yeah. like, I so saw that. Steve Fury, what, what happened I, on the I Zoom? saw him. He, oh, he does these, these drive-in shows. And I just, and I love that Steven, his management and him. Are, I I I think that's a great challenge because he's out every night. He's doing reps. He's doing that's great to get to re- and then make some money, make some coin, come back. I think he's he has a it works for him. But I just I was like, I can't chance it because I've taken two COVID tests and I've come out two or three two and I've come out in the clear. They shit on me for having this galaxy. I've got more opportunities, man. And I, I could be Fuck a commercial. IPhones, man. I hate I hate iPhones. iPhones, man. I just... You can do anything the fuck you can do whatever the fuck you want with an with an Android. Yeah. Like, you can't like Apple just like gives you like a like you can do five things on uh this iPhone and you have to do it our way. Like, it's I won't even get it. I just feel like black people, they will actually uh, I look, just that. I don't want to get into it. I, no, dude. Uh, when I text a girl and it's like the green text, I immediately get the judgment or whatever the fuck. Like I, I like I'll text a new friend and they'll immediately be like. But you, anybody, you, any woman uh-huh. that shits on you for having a galaxy and she has an iPhone, she's a horrible woman. She belongs to the streets. <laughs> if you if you hear me saying that and you hate me, you fucking your mom's a whore and your dad ain't shit. Do you follow Hoodville? Yeah, I found black. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, because I love those future memes of like, like it's like all these like wise, like all these uh, I don't know, I don't know if they're idioms of like of like she if X Y and Z then she belongs to the streets and it'll just be like future looking like a pastor or something <laughs> because because it's the worst woman to be with. It's the worst people and that's just black people. We'll make a joke out of it, but people who really kind of believe. That you are not worthy of all their attention or to judgment because I use the same. When we don't, when you look at the facts and figures, Androids are used more than iPhones all over the world. And oh, if you like look a, at the it's capabilities, not, even close. It's not, even, not close. even close. And the capabilities of a phone. Look, I've used an iPhone. I had one with this old job, and I used to go on Facebook and try to make like Facebook statuses. I just couldn't. It, I've had the most fire. Yeah, dude. I come love out my, this phone. I love, my, I love my Samsung. It's so much better as a creator. Mm-hmm. But I do know that when I open up the phone, okay, here's what gets weird as a Samsung user. When you drop this down, when you drop this down, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have these beautiful mind moments. You're like, okay, what am I doing? <laughs> what is smart view? What yeah. is screen? Work? There's a lot of unnecessary. There's a little bit of stuff here where it's like, I feel like I need a limitless pill to understand. <laughs> I, but, but. Wait, uh, this all started because we were talking about like not missing comedy. Yeah, yes. I don't miss it. I don't. I don't. I'm starting ever so often, like a little. But like, I'm my my goal was to like record another album this year. Or we were talking. I was in the talks. Is like working with a director to film a special that I was gonna be like Hannibal Thompson. Just put this on everything except Netflix, right? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> like because. It's funny about that. Like, I'm really, I got to talk to this guy from, uh, guy I was talking with uh, Amazon Prime and trying to put on YouTube and just really figure out how to brand it to where, like, it's just, you put out my special way and I was ready and just get out there and really, and it all stopped. And I wasn't upset at all because, you know, the big thing was like trying to get my life back on just some track because after LA, and not wanting to come back here mm-hmm. at all. I'm not shitting on a bit. Yeah, but I, I the to plan re- was to leave. Yeah. Leave yeah, and yeah. just learn how to live and deal with LA. But it just after this breakup I had and after the shows got canceled, I just didn't. And also the fact that I was sharing, when I was writing for Problematic, I had to share my check, which is no problem because I was in a writing team. And I, if I would have thought about like, if I would have had the whole check, I would have been fine. I would have stayed down there, but I had to come back. And part of it was just to record the album. Two is just like to kind of just get everything worked out. But then I just started having to get back in the mix. I had to, so I had to figure out my living situations. I yeah. had to figure this. But then like getting back out there, man, is like I I miss that that because there's goals. And I wanted to do at least a seven inch or 
do some next kind of project, you know, and it stopped. But I think it's been great, man, because there was a lot of woulda, shoulda, coulda stuff happening with me. And it's because of timing. But a lot of it is just that, like, you know, prior, my, my priorities lie. But I just need I always would say I wish I just had this kind of free time. And it's been great because part of it sometimes I have I wake up, I go to work, I come out. And, you know, every like every few days, like I'll have to be like, I need to relax. And I had just been I wouldn't say I'm on this like grind mode. I just needed like time to really think and figure stuff out. And a lot of that's helped me like, help me and just kind of nurture and 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 uh, and uh, nurture ideas and work at a pace that it fits me uh, because and also being alone because I work better alone. But I also know that, yeah, yeah. I but I also that. like working in a space that I have my resources, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I like, for me, I'm alone. I'm not in a relationship that ended like right as it started. Corona started mm. and it was in a real, really interesting way. And it's really funny because like, I don't like, I'm a person like when a woman leaves or if I end something, like I just don't care anymore. You know oh, what I'm, I'm not, I, 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 I hold them grudges. I don't, I, uh. I'm def- I'm the opposite. No, I look yeah. whatever's gonna get you to where you need to get. Like I I like I for I, me, spite, I live off hate. Spite is the the purest motivator for me, uh-huh. more than fucking passion. Even like spite, not no, that's not true. That's not true. But spite is a big motivator for me. Like it it it, it it's like I don't know. I I I think I one of the reasons why comedy going away was brutal for me was because it was like where I was, uh-huh. was I was where I was deriving like almost a hundred percent of my self worth. From like the actual performances and to like uh, producing shows and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, so when it went away, that was really, really fucking bad for me. I lost my train of thought. What were you just no, saying? No, no, no. This was important yeah. because there's there you're finding that you said something interesting, like how comedy, where you're finding your sense of self worth, which I think happens a lot in the big when you're in the when you're in the big because uh, it seems like a very comedy. reasonable thing to draw your self worth from, and then yeah. and then. Uh, and then, you know, something like this happens and you realize how that's like a, a stupid foundation to build your self-esteem on. Yeah. Uh, and that's what has been the struggle is finding out to like, you know, like I it's, uh, you know, it's going to sound like some cheesy shit. But like finding like just self-worth from within, because I, I relied no. exclusively on external validation and then all that went away. And I, it was just like, a, you know, a, a big fucking nightmare for me. But I but. You know, that's why I was interested in uh, how you felt about comedy going away, you know, because like, I feel like it's fine because like yeah. I was getting to a point where, you know, I I was feeling to a point where I was having uh, because up until Corona started, I was going I was going back and forth to L.A. and trying, you know, like I was uh, auditioning for a TV show and. And I had done like I went and done. I had never been out of town a lot. Like people assumed I've done a lot is traveling and all that shit. Now I would went. You never I, like a, a road dog or anything. Like nah, that? No, I had opportunities back then. But at one time I was I was in this long relationship for like seven years, and I was so committed to the woman and these kids, and uh, and I just didn't like have it because it was it just would have made it trouble or issues sometimes. But like, but. Yeah, I went out to Portland, and this was as cr- it was starting to happen. I went with my ex girlfriend. I went with Lyle. And I was with, I was with uh, my boy Trent Davis, and it was just really dope being at this shitty B club. Which <laughs> I hope they have me back. Uh, <laughs> Harvey's, please call me. Right, <laughs> and it was fun. It was fun just getting in front of the rock in front of all. I was doing like four days, and just seeing friends, and just seeing that that's the goal. Like I wanted to get out there, not be a total road dog, because the whole thing is that I want to try. I'm, I want to sell. Uh, and I also want to sell projects. And I want to be staffed and just be in the world. I want to be in the world of entertainment. I want to be in L.A. I want to travel. I want to be. But with everything that's happening, right now, it's been really cool because I kind of it's it's always been a dream because I love the Bay Area. It cripples me because that doesn't mean I try to sabotage my career so I come back here. It's like I you get love, comfortable when you get back here, though. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. But it's in, it's an incredible city that like I really like deal. Brandon said like San Francisco is a top tier city uh a hundred years ago you know what i mean it's like oh, it's yeah, so, for sure. but i but as a frisco native i see even with gentrification i'll probably i can put that aside i just really love what the bay area is and i know what's available and i know what's, uh, what can happen but now with everything folding out and knowing that like with writers rooms 
you know, having to where it's like you can work via Zoom and you can like uh, and it could be this way for a while. It could be indefinite. I'm oh, really yeah. happy with that. We, fine. We, you might not. You might hit that next step in your career and not have to go back to L.A. Like, right. Like, I but seems, yeah, if I like, here's the thing with the situation I have now, God, black Jesus, please. <laughs> Brown Allah, please, like, <laughs> please give me this. It's like if I can get staffed or my new management can help me, if I can get commercials or if I got to do something filming, great. And I can make money and I can live in the Bay Area and I could eventually afford like a below market rate house or something. Yeah, Because like, yeah. like I'm a, I got enough money I'm stacking now to where I'm thinking, okay, you, I can invest myself and do take a chunk and get a get up like you got, right? Or I could just keep stacking and put my money into like, like uh, a housing program because yeah. I'm on track to like apply for this housing program, We're five percent down, blah 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 blah, and all that shit. And that'd be great to be a homeowner, but it's just like it, there are there are it there it's an anchor, mm-hmm. and I could Airbnb and that could be more yeah, money. But I guess like Nate Bargatze never left Tennessee, right? Like I love those stories. Uh-huh. I, any, I and it's not me. Seven to, I've always loved people that work can find a way to if it's been prescribed. Like this is the this is the track you need to success. And these are things that need to keep your success. And you have to go. I don't know if it's like being around like street motherfuckers or revolutionaries or gives country. If you can find a way outside this white man system and thrive, I've always loved that. So guys like Dave Bargatze, um, I forget this other guy, I forget this guy, uh, Kronberg, I think any guy that's like Chad Daniels, all these dudes that can find a way to live in their respective towns and cities and still, like, Chad Daniels is amazing because that motherfucker has been on Conan and he's had TV appearances and he's never spent no real time in L.A. And so I always thought, can I be that person? But I'm black, so probably not, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? But but now it's like figuring it out, like writing the pilot, doing this, doing these self tapes, which I have to finish a self tape for this new manager. All this shit is so I can maybe, but like, just maybe live the drink because the dad and like raise a family mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying or and, like and aren't like all the comics not all the comics but aren't like isn't there like a big comic exodus out of la anyway like it seems yeah like, there's nothing and, to and, do and, and i feel like even when shit starts reopening doesn't mean it's all going to go back to exactly the way it was right no like, but think about it i yeah. mean you go to the comedy story like, half mo- of them are gone are leaving this city it what's the crazy. point of being in a what's the yeah. point of being in la or new york uh-huh. uh while there's no clubs, productions are starting, but it's like you're not getting anything and you're paying this absorbent amount of rent where you could just go. Now, here's the thing. Uh, from being in L.A. and been visiting New York, I mean, the thing that could keep you there is pussy. You know what I mean? Like, because the, there's beautiful women. <laughs> and, and and now that the world's opening up and people are fucking again, mm-hmm. I mean, that could be the thing that's like, well, okay, and now that Uber hasn't been shut down, all right, you get out there. And or dudes, whatever it is, you could stay there for the social aspect. And L.A. at night is beautiful. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's like nature is blowing you. You I, know what I, I mean? I had like when I was young, I had oh. like two shitty trips to L.A. where we we were in some like my my dad was like on some business trip. He was just bringing us, and we were in some like both times in some boring ass neighborhood and yeah. it was super overcast and we didn't do anything cool. So I got it in my head that L.A. sucked, and I, I was like a comforting thing to me. Because I, I never had, like, that, you know, desire to move down there. And then the yeah. most recent time I was down there, like, I had a proper time. And I was like, oh, this place seems kind of fucking rad. Yeah, you would have, yeah. you and James, yeah. if you guys were smart, you both, James would leave his lady <laughs> as beautiful as she is. If she sees or bring it, her. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I just, I was trying to, I, I, I want to b- believe in true love, you know, like. <laughs> Badass women are down there. <laughs> I mean, she's bad. <laughs> but James looks like a five foot five John Legend. Uh, okay. If he gets a barista job, uh-huh. I'm crazy. We'll talk about this after. Uh, <laughs> no, man. Look, no, I'm joking. If James brought his lady, which that'd be great. If James, she's she's bad. Like, Jay, LA is perfect. If you are married and that chick is down for you, LA, ride or die. I, if you got a ride or die, I was you go to LA. to move there and. Like next year, I wasn't gonna yeah. stick around here yeah. very long. Not because I fucking I think I'm so cut no, out for it. You get it. Get past. Uh-huh. If you did the hat trick, if you got past, I was, uh, I was 
about to get past at the San Jose Improv right before the shutdown. Uh, and I had just gotten to the second round of Rooster Tees. Uh, and uh, I figured if those two things happened. You would have got the punch. Huh? You would have, you would have got the, you would have got the, you, you're automatically going to get all, you are going to get all three. Uh-huh. When the world opens back up, especially if motherfuckers out here writing. And I was a week away from my second punchline set when it all shut down. And I did really well my first time. Yeah. And you like, got yeah. jokes and you're young and you look, you got this like. And mixed up Rubik's told, Cube of race looking per- face. Pearlstein was, Adam Pearlstein was telling me, he's like, oh, just move to LA. You're, you'll be cast as like a high school or a sitcom like that. Like, just go. Like, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you could go for American Vandal season three or four, like, <laughs> like a couple of lines. You have that privilege. The thing about it is, is like, if I'm, as somebody who's had to start getting acting classes soon and like, like really learning lines and, but learning like everything that, OG tried to teach me when I was younger and I didn't listen to it. I don't regret it, but I will say for my mistakes, everything that tiny voice, that tiny, tiny, tiny grain of rice, bed bug size, well, it says, Oh, I should act. Are you thinking about, yes, you should be taking acting cl- online acting classes or when the world opens up. Yes, do the thing that you feel you can see yourself doing. This is the only thing related in like I never wanted to write sketches. I never yeah. wanted to like, you know, you listen to a comedy podcast for 10 years and every writer like I hate working with people. Like uh uh I I really like the yeah. writers room is not appealing to me. I never wanted to make a TV show or yeah. anything. The only thing I was ever interested within the context of comedy was podcasting. Uh but it was such a distant second to actual comedy that it had to take the apocalypse for me to like really invest in it. No, I think yeah. honestly the, being here watching you and saying you have a great voice. You ever, you were, did you do, ever do radio? Uh, I very briefly in college. Very. You briefly. got a great, like it's like your shadow Stevens. That's a, that's the, uh, no, you you have to Google shadow Stevens. <laughs> I think the pot, I think shadow Stevens did fuck a black woman. <laughs> I think the, the pot huh. smoking a habit contributes to it a bit. I think it puts the, 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 the edge in the voice a little bit. Maybe yeah. smoking like, Way too much uh, fucking weed and having asthma. I think it contributes to the the smoky pipes kind of. A little yeah, bit. is it your? But is it is it your? Is do you have like nasal? Is it because you? I have a deviated could, septum. Oh, bro, don't get that word. <laughs> because first of all, you what I call the Mark Pitta syndrome. Mark Pitta was a great is a great comic from the Bay Area, but he's he's gone to other heights. But he was on KTVU News and he was a comedian. That's a great thing, man. They used to do this thing in the Bay Area. They hired comedians like Brian Copeland, Mark Pitta. I think. Uh, and I feel like there was a couple other comedians, but Mark had this like very Jewish nose. Like he had like his, like the ends, of, like his nose at the end looked like bagels. Like, you know, <laughs> like the straight up. He got, he had a deviated septum and it changed so, so much about him. It took it, the funny out. Kind of, mm. I feel like uh, he, he was, yeah, I would say, but you, when you're on the watching him, you're like, I don't know. Cause it's like Jennifer Grey and, Jennifer Gray was known for Dirty Dancing, but she was also in Ferris Bueller. She got this nose job, and it just does something. When you see a big nose person, you like them. That's why mm-hmm. like, de- that deviated. So if your manager tells you you got to get the deviated symptom ticket, you're like, fuck you. I'm out of here. Because it goes with you. But knowing the fact that like you can kill it in stand-up and here, it's like this is perfect. Because I can see this. Like The more, the deeper you go in self and you find it in your stories and your experiences and you really working out. It's it's funny how both of them are going to strengthen not just yourself, but in terms of like your well, it will straight up your strength, your comedic voice. Because that's the idea of like you forming free flowing ideas, and within that, you're having these new seeds. Like when yeah, because I couldn't write at all during like like I had friends who were like doing Zoom mics and writing jokes, and it's like I haven't thought of a new joke in fucking three months. All my jokes. Yeah come from hanging out and living life. And do, you, do you feel like you're having, do you feel like you're having aha moments? Like, well, say, oh, like, I funny. mean, like fucking, you can't trust 70% of Jordan owners is funnier than anything I've tried writing in the past month or whatever. Yeah. And that was another goal of the podcast and Twitch yeah. is like, man, I hope I can fucking think. Do of you do jokes. solo pods? No, I don't. I never, th- it never even occurred to me. Bro, I'm listening to you right now. And well, that's I what fuck. Twitch is. Twitch is the kind of just solo potting. And you respond to chat a little do bit. Do you ever give it? I would. I, 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 I give like, I don't know, like uh, 
Like when when I'm on Twitch, it'll oscillate between like because I I love video game. Like genuinely, yeah. I used to work in the video game industry. I I remember yeah, you. So yeah, yeah. I uh my I remember my dad bringing home like a PlayStation when I was like four years old. It's one of my earliest memories. Oh shit! So I was like I was on games before I was on music or movies or TV yeah. or anything. Like I didn't even have toys. I went from fucking like like I went from like baby toys to video games basically. So oh uh, damn yeah. So so Twitch. Twitch is cool in the sense of like I can shoot the shit with people in the chat. They talk about their day. I react to it or something like that. Yeah. Or I can give like a real insight into the thing I'm playing and make some recommendations. Or so it kind of hits all the stuff I think I would like to talk about in a podcast, and it's in a solo format. So I think it kind of does that. No, you, it's funny, man. If you think about it, like where you want to be, and what that will all entail, it seems like just talking to you that you are this Egyptian onion <laughs> and there's all these layers to you and I'm learning right now, but I feel that even as you're laughing, growing, I feel like with podcasting, the comics, so I, I can really see it now, like seeing the growth of Bill Burr through the podcast, it really just promotes this idea. Like, yeah, use this to work your issues to, yeah. to, to, to not just work an audience, but just to like, have more freedom yeah. with you because you and you're what's, young. What's so cool about like so like comedy fandom has evolved a ton like 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 uh, very much because of podcasts and stuff because people are like s have so much familiarity with right. like the like you know the like the craft and the struggle of it and like they they know all the the without actually being a part of it they know all the ins and outs and I like I I felt like I knew that but I didn't really project that onto other people mm -hmm. so so once i started doing twitch i was a little insecure because i was like this like you know i have no following or anything i'm just this you know who cares what i think about anything i just had a lot of that but people are so in tune with what comedy is that mm. the people the the small audience that i am getting on twitch understands exactly what the fuck is going on yeah. like they see a guy they find to be entertaining or talented they see that he's very obscure uh, and they recognize and they've told me as such that they feel like they're getting in on the ground floor uh, with like somebody who's gonna, you know, do something. Yeah. And that's why this Twitch community between me, Max, Butch and like Ian Kung is so and Mark Smalls a little bit uh, is. Yeah, so I see Mark promote that. And I'm like, Ma what the fuck Mark has a like a like a he's like, I think he's a Twitch partner. I think like he's monetized his channel. I don't think like a lot like I think you have to get a lot more followers before you can make a living okay. off of it. But he, he does well. He's he's really fucking good at Call of Duty and you can tip him to do a bong rip on camera. <laughs> that feels like prostitution. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> say, when Mark is sitting there, new two thing is like, yeah, man, fucking shit. Dude. What? Bing. And it's like, it's like this, it's like this Twitch dick. <laughs> you know, like, you suck it. I guess. Oh, I mean, I love Mark. Mark, it's it. Mark, if his if he changed his name to Dire Straits, <laughs> <laughs> like I guess I would totally understand it. Yeah. That should be a SoundCloud rap name. Yeah, I like, see old pictures of Mark and Anthony K, and nothing about them looks like they want. They they should be comedians. You know I what remember I mean? when Anthony now, now they seem like they're perfect for comedy, but I see old photos of them. Yeah, and I'm like that doesn't look like a fucking. Comedian. I performed <laughs> Anthony K a couple of years ago, and he was wearing like. Like, like tough Mexican going out for a night, <laughs> kind of. He had the he he was wearing slip. He was wearing slip and slide. He had the slack. Nothing like Anthony is now. Mark, dog, that dude. He's still a good looking guy, but when he started, handsome. Yeah, definitely, dude. Uh, uh Emily Ward told me that she'd seen she'd literally seen girls chase him out of a club like and he had to like hold them off <laughs> on that. I was like, man, I aspire to have a problem like that someday. No, bro, here's the thing about it. You know what's crazy, bro? Cause you like I'm 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 telling you, I was after watching Honey Boy last night, and like you've got this like look <laughs> that cause you're smart enough not to get hooked on drugs in LA and they're like, but you've got the talent. That's gonna blow you up. That you you gonna see Thanks, these young man. chicks Th get on. This has been like legitimately. Uh, I, I've had like even as this has been rolling out and people, yeah. I'm getting really positive feedback. And I, I like the clip I put out of James. It sounds that a lot, clip is fire. Is like it and it it got like 500 views in a day, which yeah. to me is a fucking as a nobody. Yeah, to me it like so even with all that, 
I've been hitting low points like today and yesterday. Like I'm like so like hearing this from someone whose taste I trust is like really. Uh, I wonder I how much, um, how many people in this Twitch community are very honest and earnest with themselves as they're communicating with these people and and their supporters and whatnot. Because you know what's interesting. Like with podcasting right now, I'll, I see a lot of like detractors, mostly sometimes women, brunettes, uh, <laughs> uh, who just like, I don't understand. There's all these like guys rock, like podcasts. They're all just so homophobic and, uh, and they're toxic. And yes, there are people who like, honestly, uh, uh, I would say that they sometimes they miss the point or saying that. Those guys are just telling jokes, and mm-hmm. it's like they're not taking this seriously. Yeah. And even though some of them sometimes they try to defend themselves, especially with that Shane Gillis shit, was like, "What the fuck did he get taken down?" Like, oh well, you're trying to become part of an entity, which is under NBC, and you're saying things against Asians, mm-hmm. and now you're getting deplatformed, and you're like, "Why well, would I understand? What I can't? Why would they take away something?" When I said something defl- inflammatory about this group of people on a weekly basis, you know, it's like, yeah, don't you get it? Yeah. You, and you're a white guy. Yeah, and you're no. fucking working for like a Fortune 500 company. What and do you think it's like, say what you yeah. want, but don't be, but prepare for the, uh, prepare yeah. for the backlash. Yeah. And, but, but I want the thing that when I listen to like a lot of these guys is that the reason why it appeals to me is because I want to be free. I fear death every day. Mm-hmm. I really do. It, it, I mean, even though I have, like I have thoughts of killing myself and like yeah. these horrible thoughts sometimes, like I really do fear death, and I want to feel boat, free. Yeah. I want to feel completely free. And so you see people, and also I want to make it outside of these, you know, these the prescribed rules of uh, how you need to make it with the industry. And so you see guys is like being free, no matter if they're white or a guy or some brunette white woman or some because whatever or just whatever you know whatever you are if you if you're just finding a way to communicate people and it's and you're influ- and I'm saying you're influencing people but you're just letting people wait what happened it's like a, we only have like four minutes left oh all right all right uh, i just i like i like i i think that's the whole thing a lot of people like i know that uh there is the shock and awe in the in the awe of like people saying what they want to say and sometimes it can be insulting. But I, I think that people like, you know, they, they just don't, they feel confined because your civil liberties are always taken away from you. A lot of people, you know, you're always living for somebody else. So you don't really get a sense of like who you are. You always, and you're always having to be challenged to find about like what your identity is and who you're representing. And now, especially with cancel culture, people just, you know, feel like, you know, that life was supposed to sound, sometimes it's supposed to, Feel like there there should be no bounds, you know what I mean? And you're and any kind of new advent of technology, such as social media, is supposed to be this wild west, and we can just live and with no re, you know retribution. You know, I think that people want to find that, you know, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm going in the dark web <laughs> <laughs> to you know <laughs> to sell guns <laughs> and, and, and to say crazy things online. You know I, mean? <laughs> I will be selling babies at this. <laughs> Fine, yo, I can't wait to get a Tor browser. Oh, I've I've been there. It's fucking dark, man. Bro, yeah. Here is what I'm not. I hate, I'm always saying I'm always pitching something, but there's never been. I truly. I mean, especially with boys rock, dudes rock, kind of They always kind of get into like you know conspiracies and you know secret societies and whatnot. But you never seen a POC, at least to me, be involved in that kind of talk because the fact that you know what a Tor browser is is. Blowing my it was, fucking it was dick off. Middle school, I I was fucking around with the Tor browser. I was, I was looking at the <sighs> Silk Road and shit. I was like trying to buy acid when I was in the eighth grade. <laughs> See, I could have bought Bitcoin for like fucking like a hundred bucks a coin. I could have fucking. Ugh. Uh, so there's not a lot of space left. I was gonna try and wrap it up, but I don't want to force it. So let me clear up some space and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You got it, brother. You got it. <laughs> I I think you know break breaking up as a man. Okay. And I, Because the game is so fucked up at times because we have to go hunt and secure and find this woman. And I'm not saying that to break up a person and then damage their ego and, you know, and to feel exalted as this destroyer or anything feels good. But sometimes you look at, like, when you have the intuition to say this isn't working for me, 
because it's always seen as like you should just take what you get as a guy. Yeah. And because you're lucky to have a woman. That, look, a lot of guys are very lucky. But when you get in a relationship and knowing that like, hey, I might be single out there. It might be rough. But I have to I have to do what's right for me and my happiness. And because it feels like to be a man, sometimes you have to suppress happiness. You know, I don't know when. That's interesting. That, yeah, it's really sad, and I yeah. think that like that's why I say even for to- like for like even for like COVID, like there are times I get really a little upset, but I'm doing pretty good, man. Mm-hmm. Like I I would love to be partnered up, shit, you know what I'm saying? But this time has really been really good for me. Mm-hmm. I'm really coming out of this. I'm in it. I'm in it, and I'm because thanks for therapy, but also just going to my own inner space and having time to read and just the time to myself, the air. That's why I'm really trying to have people like it's very simple about, you know, the psychology, the, how to deal with growth and how to deal with your own and to deal with your uh, how to build a better relationship with self is sometimes deal in stillness. Yeah. You know, it's very Zen, it's very Buddhist, but I'm seeing that because I have a, a cool one bedroom and myself and I and I have and I was I never like I'm not kidding I, I'm coming up like I I was in the project so I was living in like like Bane or Batman <laughs> in the darkness <laughs> yeah like I was born in the darkness like no but to come in from coming back here and I was living in my mom's room downstairs for a minute I was staying with uh so Cervantes a couple of weeks I was I had something I'd never done I live in this this one woman's place and this didn't you crash with Jonah for a bit Pollock. <laughs> Jonah Pollock. Yes, hey, fam. Hey. I was, dude, I was out here. That's why I'm saying, like, I was doing things that were out of my comfort zone, but it, and somebody might say, oh, but it was 20 bucks a night. Dude, I ran a show there every Friday. I, I never would have stayed the night. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> it was wild, dog. I got, I got, dog, I got, I got, I was in this place one time and I fucked this girl at the place <laughs> and I was sitting there like, how life is such a trip, man. I'm in this place that looks like it's covered in radon. There's no roaches. <laughs> that was the thing about Jonah's place. The, the weirdest fucking When thing. you go downstairs, have you been to the places downstairs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is that place? Okay. How is that, how is that place still? How, how is that place still up? I don't understand. It's, it's the weirdest fucking thing. It must be. And, dude, like, anytime we booked somebody new on that show. Yeah. And we didn't open the door immediately when they got there. No. They would be so fucking spooked <laughs> because it's in this like <laughs> rough part of west you you would drive under a bridge and see it's like oh i know walked the, i walked from the, uh, from the insane that i underpass? walked yeah i walked from um f- during that festival i walked from the all-out comedy theater that was when it was at like, its worst yeah. yeah 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 i thought and i'm look i'm almost six feet i'm a Big dude, I'm bearded. If I don't say nothing, I look like you can feel it safe. could be a problem. You, you feel safe, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yo, when I was walking there, I was like, I was like in a Jodie Foster movie. You know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> keys. Yeah. I will dude, not be a victim anymore. <laughs> I was like, I remember yo, I'm Jonah gonna was, die. Jonah was telling me he's like, hey, if you see people looking for parking, make sure that you, you let them know they can park in front of the driveway. Yeah. Unless it's in, like a white 90s Mercedes convertible, that's the slumlord across the street. And I was like, ha, ah, okay, cool. All right, I'll dodge that you, one. You know, you know you in some bad times, and I love my people, but anytime I see black kids shirtless on razor scooters or there's an antiquated form of like a bicycle kind of scooter. Dude, there's some sat comic that says you know how bad your neighborhood is. I think it's a sad comic where it's like if it's if it's mostly adults riding bicycle or it's like yeah it's like (laughs) (laughs) yo if your hood if you know it's bad when honestly there's no newspapers (laughs) and if they are newspapers like no here's the thing you know okay like for me I know it's bad if you see black kids flipping off mattresses. Mm-hmm. Cause that's 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 a real sign of like I the way I have fun is jumping off a bed bug filled mattress like that that's a really that's a, but the real shit is I mean 
your white crackhead to blackhead ratio is even, mm-hmm. that's a really shit sign, bud. <laughs> when you that's when like you, Skid Row, basically. Yeah, right? that's when yeah. you get a white dude named Scooty. You yeah. know what I mean? Like when Scooty when oh, Scooty and Slaps did. is white. That's right? what we didn't know the whole time. Scooty yeah, that, that's the, that's the M Shyamalan twist that they were actually white. What? <laughs> like, die. I'm trying to tell you, man. Like when when it's hard to find juice in your market. Like everything has got every every juice is named after a city or a state. Uh oh. Uh-oh. What? All right. The police. Gonna... This shit right, because usually when it's like a brother I know that's where I get their shit up. It's it's like they got the mechanical shit, but they do something that's still fucked up. A little you know? too DIY. Yeah. yeah, it's like ah oh, man. All right. Well, we've we've been recording for like two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, to wrap it up. Uh, unless there was a, a, a thought you hadn't finished? Uh, I guess, no, just like you, I think that any, if I could impart any kind of wisdom or say something is that, uh, well, first of all, I want to say that uh, we should def- we should refund the police. <laughs> that's my new cause refund. is re- refund the police. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> so, like give them their money back? Yeah, yeah, give the cops the money back. I mean, they yeah. work hard. I mean, like, you know, I started standing that, man, you know? Uh no, is that like with all this? Is there, this is definitely a challenging time, and I think it's like, I, I man, look, look, man, don't wear a mask. <laughs> don't what be a pussy. Yeah, don't walking be, around like a real like fucking a, like piece of shit. Woman. Like a like a woman <laughs> that, wearing I a love, fucking dude, mask. That's how you know. Huh? Uh, that's how you know like who the really hard motherfuckers are when yeah. when they don't call you. Like a bitch or an ass or like they call you, what are you a woman like they say woman <laughs> uh, like like I both Conor McGregor and uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov I was like, he's like he fights like woman like something when you just say <laughs> woman is just so much, like that's your lowest insult for a person that <laughs> that's like I don't know that's how I know like I to walk across, like to the other side of the street <laughs> basically yeah. uh, so I wanted to ask just to wrap up uh, what the weirdest like fucking COVID apocalypse thing you've seen is mine, for example, Mm. is I was walking by the panhandle uh, and I saw a lady, an old lady, and I mean old, like fucking 75 or something, jogging in a full Chernobyl gas mask next to a a bunch of kids in masks doing Ring Around the Rosie. Uh, uh, That's the wildest shit I've seen, uh, uh, aside from, you know, suffering on the streets, just in terms of like Wild ass apocalyptic imagery. Have you seen anything crazy? Yeah. Since, yeah. What What have you seen? Uh, <laughs> so, this is, all right. So I'm a night owl. I'm definitely a night owl. Like, I, like I saw. Like sometimes I'll just take walks and just go around and shit. And this isn't too crazy, but I was down walking down just out near the Palace of Fine Arts. It was just like it was like one in the morning, like on a Tuesday and some shit, right? And. uh I was walking, I was going to cuts, something I like to go into cuts, right? And I I don't know why this was happening, but this this lady was sucking this guy's dick on the grass. Jesus Christ. And I was watching from behind a car. I look like Drake in his new video behind the Nike box. So I was just like, <laughs> like, like, right, like, right. And I was watching it, and it was a fat chick. So I was like, oh, he's having a good time. All right. And <laughs> And he was tall. He was like six nine, and she was like a she was a, a plumper. And I, I'm gonna say she was Mexican because she, she had like, I don't know. She just built like ten pico bottle, right? So she <laughs> sit there, but she looked like a real Esmeralda, right? Uh-huh. So she could have been, but she was at least, at least six feet. This was a really crazy. Thing. So he's getting slurped up, or he's getting his churro, the sugar sucked off his churro, right? Oh God, and. I was I had to get a better look at what was happening, right? Okay, this shit made I was just mania as fuck. She was blowing him with a hole she had cut in her mask. I I was what? Gonna, <laughs> dog, Dude, I, I thought it was about to get so much worse. I thought you were gonna say she had one of those like I smoke too many cigarettes. No, like <laughs> I, 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 I don't smoke can't. That would be great if the dick went in her hole, like oh. ah, 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 you're coming. Ah, and it comes out ah, ah. like it's like it's like the like they ripped the head off the off the off the robot and aliens like ah, ah, you know you know. <laughs> Murphy, okay, a, a hole in the mask. She had a hole in the mask, and. I was trying to piece together, like, 
did, and I was going to post this on Facebook, but sometimes, like, I've been so blessed that my life is so eventful that people think, like, oh, you just make up shit or you're just a great creative writer. No, I've been, I get a lot of shit to have. And I was in a point where I had no one to talk to about this, and I just saved it because I was like, I'm just, and it was so good. So, and it was so wild. And second of all, dude had a monster dick. <laughs> Like, like I'm good. Like I'm, <laughs> like I, I'm good. Like I'm, I'm, act, I feel good about my situation, right? Mm-hmm. But when you see a non-black person with this albino snake, and yo, he was, he was okay. So they're laying down, and they look like what happened was this is late. So there was there were bottles out. There was a wine bottle, this and all that, and he was he was behind like a bush situation but on like grass and she's just like, uh, 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 and I was thinking that, all right, just the angle may look at this dude was rocking at a smooth nine and some change. That's like, that's like almost a curse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like that's when you like, when you're watching porn and you that, feel that, concerned that for the woman. Yeah. And like, it, that looks like that hurts. Yeah. That right? looks like that hurts. And also this man will never be satisfied. So <laughs> yeah. she, so she's got the hole in her mask, right? She's got the hole. Like I have my mask. So like, wait, wait, it's like, okay. So the chick, wait, do I have my mask on me? Hold on. Oh, wait. So she's got her mask, right? She's got her mask, right? So she's got her mask. And the shit is going in her mouth. And it looked like, I don't know if you were taking breadsticks out the oven. Okay. <laughs> like, she looked like she was, like, bobbing for breadsticks. <laughs> and it was so, there was the nastiest part. I'm watching this to completion because I just wanted to warn She He comes, she takes off her mask and wipes her mouth with the mask. And I know they was hurting Because I was in the back mask. I went, Maybe, maybe that's a move she's been doing since before COVID. <laughs> maybe that's just been the <laughs> that's just a pro cleanup tip she got from a vet. <laughs> so, she, I mean, they say no glove, no love. You know what I mean? But uh, no mask, no blast. You know what I mean? That was wild, bro. I was the, I think that was the craziest shit I saw. And I I I was I remember I I was like on a uh, like a Tuesday, and I went home, and I had, I had to go to work the next day. And you know those days, every day when they asked you, like, how are you doing? I was just, like, typing, like, what the fuck was I saying? And other than that, man, I mean, the rest of the time is just seeing white people at cafes while poor people walk down the street. And yeah. just like, but other than that, man, like, with COVID, I mean, nah, man. Like, I, okay, here's the thing I'm concerned with. I'm scared as the the world's opening up. Black people who watch this, look, man, I know these videos look lit. Everyone's partying. Everyone's doing and getting mask numbers. Look, we still wear a mask. Don't let black people die. Mm -hmm. Like, if white people die, look, whatever. You know (laughs) what I'm saying? We need Asians. We need Indians. We need to save Indians. You know what I mean? (laughs) We still need to group up with us. But, like, black people, that's the most horrible thing I see. Like, I saw this black pool party. Mm-hmm. And it was like hundreds of black people, and it's great because they were black people were all in the pool, not like around the pool, right? <laughs> and just like I get that because what is it's creating this powder keg or this pressure cooker, uh, you know. And I know that we're to release attention, have fun, but we're letting we're we're abandoning we're abandoning common sense and and just and and just like and the, you know i guess the sanctity and the and the respect for your, your common your fellow man gets to have a girl with this with these with this ass slapping on you and i say it look great it's some of them, it look great but i just i fear that's scary to me cuz i concern with black people first and the rest of the world second right mm-hmm. and seeing that black people get starting to do that but just in terms of my life nah just like that and just coming across people i know with covid and i'm just still very scared i'm very and it I'm, and the only thing I'm scared is for myself because COVID has fucked up my sleep a little bit. Yeah. And, I, and I'm and i trying. It's hard for me to get to sleep. Yeah, me too. That's yeah. why That's why anyone that's like seriously with somebody and they love each other. And look, you know the scariest thing I've been seeing? These COVID engagements. Oh, yeah. I saw you post about that. That's just like, I don't know, man. Like, like it, it, COVID pregnancies lot, engagements. I've heard so many stories of like, oh, yeah, I was like on a... Like I, I date, I've been on like two dates with this girl, and then COVID happened. And we just moved in together, and it's great. And I'm like, is it 
Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I get that you feel fortunate, and sometimes you might find the right person. And look, I'm a I'm a relationship guy. I you know it, it would be great to like be with somebody, and, and somebody I'm really like you know there with, and because I feel like. It is bothering me sometimes. Like I feel like when some rela- some relationships I've had, and they're like, "Damn, man, how did not work out?" Because I'm 43, and I'm at this point where I wish I could have a kid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, not be married first, because mm-hmm. yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what God I gotcha. wants. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. There's two things that's wrong: people that are not married and gay people, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, that's that's my whole stance. Like that's right there, right? And it's like, uh, yeah, but like I tend to think like, you know. I have to. I'm not perfect. Sometimes I I don't have this inflated sense of self. Where like I'm the coolest guy in the world. I'm funny, you know. But I am. I am a good. I could be a good father and I could be a good partner. It's just my choices have been not always that. It's great. And I also say like you know it's not a good match or you know you're you're not that match for the person. But it's like these COVID engagements, especially with like people who have been together for like two years and all that shit and they're just and they and or and because you're having a zoom wedding oh. no, you know what's worse than a comedy zoom comedy show yeah, a zoom, zoom wedding. wedding yeah yeah what if you know what's so funny well i mean where does zoom funeral place in there <laughs> you know what that was a funny story i saw on like, what damn it twitter is that a zoom funeral and the worst was like what, you leaving early <laughs> like I'm leaving you can leave a meeting because you gotta go to the bathroom or that, but you're like you know what I got what I had to my uncle did good you know what I mean <laughs> or he was a racist I gotta get out or he gets boring you know what mm-hmm. I mean like that to me zoom and zoom bait like zoom pregnancies like I'm I mean the only person I'm excited for are, are family lawyers you know what I mean because they're gonna be popping in 2021 man <laughs> but yeah, man, but like I don't know, man. I think I think it could be really love, great, and it, it, it really is dependent. It's like if people find somebody during this, I don't think it shouldn't be that hard to find somebody, especially if you were already talking to people. Mm-hmm. You know, because the thing about I'm seeing people go out, see each other. People who are committed, I I commend them because I'm like I'm like, hey, I'm cr- social distance, can see them all the way. I get you on that, but if you start like talking to people. And you start finding ways to like, you know, like uh, date and, you know, kind of court. I I think I'm all for that now. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, you know, because like, like if you just want to play the field, that's a little harder. But I know plenty of dudes fucking hella women. That's the thing people aren't talking about. There's a lot of COVID dick out here and a lot of COVID pussy. There's a lot of COVID fucking going on. And because people, it's beyond us like my human desire, my, you know, my reptile brain. It's like, no, nah, man, like. People, I'm telling you, man, people, you know what's so great about people delving into themselves is that they're finding out they're a piece of shit. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, like funny. my homie, man, he went on one date with this girl that he knows he couldn't have fucked with. He fucked her in the ass that night and she was a ravenous animal. And she said, you know, I wouldn't have done none of this. It's just that, and he finished her sentence. Yeah, COVID. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he also gets it. I know you're probably not gonna talk to me when this thing comes. So he's like, no, totally. We're gonna hang out. And he's like, he's like, nah, man. He's trying to. There's a lot of ugly dudes out here who are ca- catching so much action. Well, I need their secret, I guess. <laughs> what? I need their secret, then, bro. You, you got look, bro. Maybe you, I just need you get photos, ripped, dude. I don't. I don't get fucking. I, don't, I get nothing on them. I get absolutely. But look how you even saying it. Huh? This was pissing me off. See, here's the thing about you. Because I'm dark skinned. I've got a powerful mind. I've got a, a decent personality. I read two a newspaper a day. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? You're light skinned. Uh-huh. If I had your fucking skin, if I had your goddamn skin, that stupid smile of you, you and this like French bulldog fucking <laughs> you, know, like, you know, I would I would be running shit. I would be I love being dark skinned. I hope I get darker. But if I had a week as you Man, I'd be running if Steph Curry, if Steph Curry got divorced. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gotta tap into your light skin in this man. I know uh. you the color of a band aid. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta rip. You gotta you gotta rip that band aid off and you gotta put it on somebody else and <laughs> deal with their healing. You know what I mean? But no, man. Like you're good shit. You got you good money. Mm-hmm. You're good money, man. I'm telling you, the good looking dude. You got this to pop it. You just you're thinking like a white guy. Yeah, I just 
No, take that in, bro. Yeah. Cause it it pisses me off with you creamy motherfuckers, man. All you Team Drake color looking motherfuckers, like Milano colored motherfuckers, y'all running around here, don't even know. You should be running the point right now because there's nothing worse than a self-hating white woman than what they're going to do. They're going to hop on some murky colored motherfucker like you. Too much cream in the coffee, motherfucker. And you're smart and you're bubbly. You know the thing about it? Because you're, you, cause you, you have a shark in you. A shark? Shark. You're okay. a shark. You're okay. a shark, right? Yeah, a shark. And you're, because business is what's happening. It's your, the thing that's going to, like, as long as you're also centered to who you are, as long as you don't become a dick, you put your put your brain like when Magneto like and this is for the nerds and like yeah, yeah Professor no. Rack, no people like, get Magneto bend a spoon <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. into this uh-huh. I mean go to the death it's like it's like when Batman when he got thrown into that uh, that hole Batman three I don't know yeah, yeah, yeah I got you and he had to climb out you go into the depths <laughs> of who you are and into this you're gonna come out with this and I'm telling you because some people don't like saying it. But when people can sense that the person is enigmatic and he, they're intelligent and they're and they're witty and they have all the things, those are the things. But it's like you're given a a, a certain amount of leeway and time of poten- potential. I'm 43. I don't want to necessarily look 43, but I'm honest about my age. Yeah. By the fact I'm so honest and honest about my age, that it cuts off a lot of action because, like for me, like my next partner. I, there are women that I'm scared to talk to mm-hmm. because not because of just what they, they they do, you know what I mean? It's that I wouldn't say scared, but I'm um, I'm 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 definitely not scared. I wouldn't say scared, but I'm uh, I'm I don't I'm not I'm on I'm not willing to really talk to them or reach out yet because I need to see I need to get through this stuff myself because I've had women. Homegirls of mine, not even I'm trying to fuck with, talk to me for real about the in their, they think very general, very macro about women. And some of them talk to me, it's like, you know, you have this and all this. The only thing that's, one thing that's missing is the money. Mm-hmm. Is because, see, you got all, because, like, I'm, as a fat black dude, I'm, I'm all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As a regular person, I'm the shit underneath the rock. Oh, come on. Not <laughs> but, like, as a fat dude, because my thing is like, I don't know if I want to marry a fat woman. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I don't feel bad saying that most fat people don't want to be with another fat people. You know, the best time of life is when a, when a fat dude bigger than me wants to be my friend. I'm like, nigga, get the fuck away from me. All right. <laughs> you want you 310 pounds. I'm 250. I don't need to be around you. I don't want to know about these donut cheating. I don't Cause every fat dude that hits me up, they want me to join their dumb page, their feast me now page. And, all this shit, get away from me, bro. I'm like, you know, the best thing if I would have came out of Corona rocked up, uh-huh. but I would be punk, man. <laughs> I, you even wouldn't want to see me if I came out rocked up, like like how Action Bronson trying to get rocked up. But I would quit comedy. I go straight back because it's just like. But I'm back to the saying, it's like, it's like, man, dog, it's like the money because I I'm a strong brain. I have a good personality. I'm good with people. It's just like you just have to make your own way. Because nobody, at a certain point, I'm reaching middle age. By this time, I should have had, the world has expectations of you. Like right now, like you have a business. You probably have decent credit. You can drive. You're self-sustaining to a degree. You're trying to get your self-esteem and your, you know, your your, your ethos and your pedagogy. You're trying to get your direction straight. Mm-hmm. And, your, and your self-worth has to be intact. I've already got a lot of because I work in social services, so I work with these gold panner looking ass dudes. Like, yeah, man, what you look? Man. I'm always trying to better myself. My mind is strong, but it's just the money because a lot of women they just don't want to say it, man. It's like, it's like, look, I want to be partnered up it with ir- somebody. It, it irked my ex that I didn't have a day job. Like, it really irked her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people also want to have a shared pain. It's like a point. Yeah, of no, viewing. that was one of the main things she cited was we just have such different lifestyles, and I was like, so anytime, so? like, here's the thing about young comics. Look, man, I I don't try. I am always talking that shit, and I'm holding court, but I speak from my experience. Like all women comics, men comics influencers creators funny people whatever stop dating if you find a woman that has the interest in comedy or did it or it, they just they're gonna do it it's like if you're fucking with me i need to and it's not about competition it's not that it's there's this thing about 
it, there's this thing about like people see you from afar. They like what you do as the person you are and the thing that you do. But the thing that you do it's going to take time. And because comedy is so immediate, they just start having these assumptions like, why can't you like do this? Why can't you? And they try to why figure it out. Why isn't paying the bills yet? Yeah. It's yeah. like, it's like, it's like I have seen comedy. I've been to this too. When you get a woman who's a plus one-er, oh, like yeah. they, meaning? meaning that a ride or die, they will stand out with you. And if they think that you've done some things, it's like, yeah, I'm not, I can't get access into this Russell Peters show because I'm only an opener or I'm not paid. You know, we just have to stand in line. Sometimes you have a plus one or who's along for the ride, but they're trying to be around the life. Yeah. Okay, and they yes. want to see the life that you can't even get to yet. Yeah. So you got to, and that's why it's like, if you want to have their relationship uh, work out, the the example I give, and I'm not saying that he did this all the way, but it's an, in, it's an inspiration. My is, Somebody like Al Madrigal. Mad Madrigal was somebody who started comedy late, late 20s. Good comic. He did everything you're supposed to do to put yourself in position. But he also had a bad, he has a badass wife. And I, I don't know everything about him. I don't know anything about him like that. But I've heard stories. And I know that I've met him. And I've seen, I've, I've always been a fan from afar. He did the work so to have the life properly to, 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 for this life he has with his wife. And because they wanted, because they got, because late 20s, early, almost early 30s, you got to start thinking about kids. You got to start thinking about credit house. And with this, it's so uncertain what you're doing. You have to find a way to make people feel whole, make people feel that this investment with their time and their resources, their body, their love, their energy is having a noticeable return. So you've got to almost kill yourself. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Like That's when you what's kind of stung from like from that reaction. Yeah. Of like, yeah, okay, I get I get why you'd want maybe that stability and consistency, but like hey, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Like and that's the and, thing. and that's what stings where it's yeah. like where it's like you're holding me to this high standard yeah. and you are com- you are absolutely passionless. Yeah. And you have you have nothing but like and I'm not saying a personality and good looks and being exciting no. is nothing. That's a lot. But I want more too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want a girl with a dream too. You know what I mean? And that's why you have to get on Raya. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's why it was, it was frustrating of like, yeah, okay, maybe I, I don't have that, but you see what I'm trying to do and you've seen that I do it well. And if, if it, if it was the other way around and I was still working in PR and I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do. Yeah. And I met this like, s- like super badass comic, uh, like broke comic lady. Yeah. I'd be all in. I wouldn't give a, f- I wouldn't give a fuck about the broke part. Yeah, and it's just I, I. It's just a weird. I don't know. It's weird. It's just like it's very weird. But yeah. this is the idea that this is interesting when I think about guys. You know, it's shitty to do this, but you've got to treat sometimes your relationships with your family and your partner like a probation officer. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I dealt with probation, right? Not not personally. I mean, I could have been on probation as a teen, but that was that's a whole other story. Right? <laughs> teen prostitution, yeah, man. I mean, next whatever. time, you know, <laughs> under the bridge, you know, with a mask on, right? So, but <laughs> I invented it. I, you know, no mask, no blast. That's what I invented, right? <laughs> no, the blast Bentley was like called. Blast right? Bentley. That's my new name. That, that uh, that'll be the podcast title. I think that we got it. Yeah, blast Bentley. <laughs> but it's like. That's the thing for a lot of kind of a lot of people who are looking for something that, like it's so impo- it almost seems impossible to do because comedy is always working against you. Even when you're great, you're a journeyman. You're you you do work for a short amount of time. You make an insane amount of money, and then you're hoarding it, and you're always putting out there until you start finding you make a platform or you find another stream of income that's consistent. People are. It's like Americans are born to be like bred to be cogs in the wheel. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And what we're trying not to be the cog, we're trying to be the conductor. You know, but if you deal with a cog, they're not looking at for you and they don't know what it's like to try to get there and rev up it and move and like whatever. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what happens a lot of these relationships is that one of the things that you do when I was analogy I'm saying about treating it like a probation officer, you have to report to this person know what you're doing and then with it they give you they believe in you more and they start working with you more and there's certain gifts and there's accoutrements that come with this, the relationship getting better and sometimes you do need to treat your partner like that because they're just seeing like like 
what you doing on stage, but they need to see the results of it. So like, if you like, like great, that's what great. Your social media is your agent. That's your manager. That's that's my your resume. PR. Yeah, yeah. And you're daily putting your resume. It's like, so everything that you do, if like, if you're going to go for the podcast, it's like, you need to like treat this like, Right, like the business. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. whether you want to be like take this the come town route where you're doing like Patreon, but you treat your you treat that your and your fan base with seriousness and you're providing for them and you're really working at a high at your at this optimal level, you go for it. If you're if you're on the come up, you treat every show like if you're getting booked on something, you're like constantly putting up and you're just engaged. You gotta figure out a way that there all this is going to have a noticeable return. And it's like, like you see Stroy, Stroy out here balling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he, cause he put it in there. You know what I'm saying? He put, he's done the work and he's, and he's built this thing. Mm -hmm. And, and it's something, it's just that, and you're not trying to be combative with your partner, but you've got to understand it's like, and you, you also, when you're putting it all together, you got to be understanding that your success could lead to this uh conscious uncoupling or this separation because sometimes the people start seeing the person you're becoming and they realize that they might they themselves are lacking and they themselves might not uh be the person they might think the person for you because some people are okay uh being in the in the person that they are it's very it's it's like a blanket you know what i mean or you're covering or you're your blanket or your jacket or whatever it is. The thing that shields you from not just the outside world is that your is it shields you from this the the disappointment you'll have within yourself. So when you see somebody coming from the muck and trying and they're and let's say they ask you like, oh, what are you doing? That simple question can be it could be crumbling. You know what I mean? It could be the beginning of the cavity that becomes the root canal. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And I think that's a lot of comics have to remember. It's like that you this is a this is a this is a journey that you might you might it's sad that you might have to go about this alone for a long time. Now yeah. I'm not saying that you should be, uh -huh. but but be prepared. Be prepared yeah. for a lot of lonely nights. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. With this, what you got going on? Like yeah, like even though like because uh, I was so the reason I wasn't you know dating right before COVID, right. I was just you know I wasn't even on the mind. I was getting over some stuff. I was staying single. Uh, yeah. on purpose but then uh, uh then covid hit and you know like all the free time and the loneliness and you have this impulse to bring somebody in yeah. but uh, like james made a point and it's just like it's it's super hard to date when you don't feel good about yourself like uh, yeah but, but you know but, it's funny it's now, also, i find that there's times where i see people find people when they're not good about themselves really i knew a dude, <laughs> this, guy, uh, this dude. but I, I just i uh uh say that to say that now I'm doing stuff and I've made a lot of, of changes both in how I treat myself and how mm -hmm. I see myself in the world. But also, you know, like tangible stuff like building a studio, yeah. losing a bunch of weight, getting on Twitch. And now I'm busy again. So even though I and now I feel good about myself mm -hmm. and I want to put myself out there and date somebody, I'm now at a point where I'm working super long days. And I actually don't I'm as soon as I want a girlfriend and I don't have time for one right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's, this, but yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. even at this, this is even with this right now, this moment, we're, this moment we're having right now. Uh, if one thing you could take away from this is that if you could just step outside yourself and seeing that this, um, this amazing opportunity that you have for yourself, because honestly, I, from getting to know people who are successful and for me, it's about money. Uh, I guess that's the only thing that's more important than money uh, is that it's that your evolution as a young man th this is the one most trying times as a man um, between 18 and 25 I don't know if a lot of women always see this because it's hard for women too i don't i don't know what it's like to be a woman because i'm blessed uh <laughs> but uh, it's, it is what it is. Well, keep I'm going a, keep going uh, but you know when when you're as a, a man trying to find his way and you're trying to free yourself from the prisons of masculinity and you know if you think you benefit from the patriarchy you're 
you're trying you're trying to break all the shells and feel comfortable with who you are because there's so much things that tell you as a man that you're inadequate because you're not successful you're not tough you're not the marble man you know yeah, you know, yeah. So like, and you're not you know you're not you know you're not uh you're not rich or you're not wielding this big sword so a lot of the time you're always constantly feeling like shit and you know, and then or if you double up and you know really let testosterone ruin your life you're just having this life that's filled with you know anger uh energy and the suppression of fear and regret and then you become an old man and then you're stuck with that because now you're your loss of testosterone, vitality of that. Now, that's why I used to work at sealed nursing facilities or work with people in them. And you see these old men with these stories. And it's just the fact of like, it's incredible to see men who want to die because they feel that they're disappointing. They, they feel disappointed about the what has led them to this state of like, yeah. absent. It's really, it's like, it's, they're so absent and they're so empty. But it's so interesting. That's why I say like right now, like delving into yourself and getting involved with this, you'll see that your relationship with time will, will bring you, I truly believe bring you the partner that you need for that time or, you know, the things that you want because you're ready for it. A lot of time people say like, why don't I have this person? Why don't I have that person? Because They're not ready. Right? You're never ready. Yeah. Dog. I, that's the thing with me. It's like, like, and sometimes they're not ready for you. You know, that's the thing about too. A lot of guys, a lot of people just really always focus on like what they're doing wrong. But it's like, once again, it's like you're worried about, you know, the thing you want to start doing is like you have to figure out your philosophy, your contribution to the world. It doesn't mean you're not a good person, but as comics, that we're doing, we're giving this license. You know, we're giving this license to be insane and articulate and, and, and you know, and, and I think to, uh, you know, being able to shape people's worlds in a 15 minutes, an hour. And, but we're also expected, I think, to evolve to this highest, use this. It's like the way you love Dave Chappelle, even though he probably wants to kill trans people. <laughs> no, but he like, he's right. Yeah, he's, he's reaching his zenith because he's, re he's given his opportunity. You know, he took something from just a simple stage or performing the street to really go into depth of like what he believes, shaping and molding ideas, and and and, and just the bravery at all, and also and he's in also dealing to the highest of his intellect, and that's the thing that people want out of I think a lot of comics, and that's why it's so good for you to find your channel, and I really believe that people who understand you, you'll find it as the more you're able to understand and expose yourself. That's why it's like funny, like the truth sayer, the real truth tellers in comedy. When I saw, when I get to see them in LA and like really out there, and I see them with their partners, it's like, man, it's they're so comfortable. Especially yeah. the ones who aren't divorced. I mean, the ones that are mm -hmm. out there. It's like because they did the work, and mm -hmm. they and the person they they appreciate the work they put into their self, you know, and their in their soul. And I just think that like. Oh, that's what the whole point of this right now is to just delve in without fear. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do, man. I really, I, some days I am at my lowest, like to tears, mm -hmm. you know, I've, and if you ever seen a fat black man cry, it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty sad. <laughs> okay. You know, it's like, you know, it's, it's like looking at a sweaty chocolate cupcake, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but it's, only, but most of the time I'm really good, man. I'm really incredible. And it's like, but this is a fight, man. Just trying to get everything out. I really want to finish this pilot. I really want to get staffed. I mean, moving, I, I'm for it, but I'm also trying to get, but I'm just trying to get away from trying to prove things to people. Yeah. Yeah, man. I wish I could. It's the, yeah, it's yeah. the worst. Mm -hmm. Living your life because I, I someone feel, else I find myself free from their judgment to prove myself to people who haven't, you know, who proven don't themselves. Even, but know? that's why yeah. you have to figure out what you have to, because for me, it's like that kind of shit. Cause I'm it really, it's like how angry I am. Like fucking psycho. Mm -hmm. Like the anger in me, like, man, I don't I can, think people can tell cause of the, the sweet baby face. I am 
filled with rage. Age, and, but that's yeah, the yeah, thing yeah, about yeah. it. People, and you know, know that white people know that because the regular black guy that you think he's, I tell people, you keep a nigga with a gun is the most violent person. Talk to a nigga that works in an office. Yeah. He wants to kill everybody. Because, yeah. <laughs> because the, and because you're dealing with racism from your own, not racism, discrimination from your own community. Because you think, because we deal with so many for the separatism and, you know, in, in terms of like classism and expectation. And also just like dealing with other people, expect, you know, thoughts about what it is to be a person. Oh, guess you who you are. It's like the anger of, because, because you're doing the work and you shouldn't have to go through so many fucking hoops as a person of color. And it's exhausting. That's why it's so, that's why interracial relationships are wrong. You know, no, that's what I said. no, but that's a whole. There other is story. this like there. I like I. There is a like this permanent like gap of disconnect I, I felt with like dating white girls. Yeah, yeah. Of like and, like even if you're great and we have a lot of chemistry or something, there is this like introversible gap that will, like of like of like of a way we'll never be able to relate that like, just. some people i know who have good relationships with their white woman with their devil <laughs> my ex asked me if i went to muslim church and then she and then when i made fun of her for it she held it uh, against me like i was the asshole and i was like you just said muslim church dude <laughs> i mean you know what's so funny as a comic it's. I would hope she if she can look back at this and understand how funny it is. Just in terms of just looking at the line, like Muslim church, like it's like it's funny. Gets the it just it just works. It's it's it gets the words. Sometimes words. It's not about what saying about your intelligence. It's just about visuals because you know. But then just to say like, you know, just to say like to create such a distance and all and I, and I and not trying to create some understanding and I, and look and I've talked to some white women knowing that like. Part of our sometimes part of the difficulty in interracial relationships is uh, the acceptance that it's the it's a conversation we have with yourself, knowing that are you uh, what is my true relationship with this race? What, how do I benefit from racism, and what am I doing to eradicate racism and I mean white supremacy? Mm-hmm. I mean, any white woman right now that's thinking about being a black man or a person of color or someone like Murad, a Band-Aid colored <laughs> person of color, right? Is that, what is your relationship with white supremacy? You know what I'm saying? I'm getting real fair kind of like that. Like, the white man <laughs> is the devil. You know what I mean? But is but that's the idea, as I understand, because, and also, like, I understand, like, what is, what is your take in this relationship? Because I know, I've I talked to, like, two white girls in my life that, like, they were talking about their partner, and they're like, yeah, like, no one ever hears like my side, and I'm like, oh, the tiny, uh, the tiny violin comes up. But I was really open, and I was like, yeah, like it's like sometimes you're like, it could be very just dealing with like, you know, like I want, I love him, I know what's going on, and I just, and you know, it's sometimes it's it can be depressing learning about race, yeah. But well, as a person that deals with racism every day, it's a little more depressing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, but this one woman was just telling me she was like, no, but just hear me, like it's just like. You know, some days it's hard, and I, you know, I don't think he does understand. But like, it's not like I, it's not like she preferred to be with a white man. But it's just that um, she's being held accountable for for things that she wishes, you know. Yeah, you know, and if you're openly to, processing, yeah. and hopefully your partner will understand. Then you, but it's like, but what do you think your outcome is? Yeah. You think we're all just gonna piece up Crips Bloods? We all <laughs> in the same gang, you know, type of shit. Like, no, nah, like. You got to deal with it. And I'm saying some shit you got to deal with yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's, I don't know, man, but it's just like, dog, it, it's, we just got to kill white people. That's dog. it. All right. I think that's a great note to end on, right? That's all I'm we saying. just got to kill white people. That's all we got to do, man. Right. Well, Rally on Saturday. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know Be there. Dr. Be there. Hentai. <laughs> 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 Wait, but uh, I got to I gotta let some people know what's up with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was about to. Yeah, I was about to. Like, oh, sorry, brother. No, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, there's two things. One, if you, if you have something to plug, plug that. And also. I'm plugging Matt. Uh, we so I'm might, plugging my yeah, mask. Uh, we also might do uh, like a. Uh, shoot an introduction at the end like i'm here with kasim and yeah, like yeah. if you want some credits read or some shit yeah, yeah. Right. okay so, so what do you got what do you got i got a new show call is that you karen it's a show it's a show hosted by me and james mora uh it's a monthly show where it was a bi-weekly show where we roast karen videos and everything that involves with race and during these trying times of COVID. it's a really funny show we got videos we got interviews we got special guests we got 
uh, questions. Damn, that yeah. sounds. I didn't realize how high, like high production value that. Oh was. yeah, this yeah, is cool. this is this is. Uh, I'm trying to tell you, I'm, it's like it's like Phil Jackson when he found the like the Bulls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, this one's going good, and I. And uh, I'm pretty soon I should be able to release my podcast, Black White Slavery. Mm-hmm. That What's really it called? Good. Say that again. White Slavery. White Slavery. Yeah, I had some tech issues. Dude, I got to talk to you about some tech issues. Sure, sure, I, sure. I did three episodes and it's like, it's ready to go. It's just, there's some problems with just the sound and it's ready to go. And But you can find me on social media. You can find my album, Lakeview. It's on, on Blonde Medicine. You can find it all streaming uh, networks. You can also buy it on iTunes. Uh, find me on social media, Kasim Bentley, all, all there. Find me on Threadless. I got shirts. Oh, hell yeah. Got some great shirts on there. And, uh, yeah. And also, yes, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay, cool. All right, well, thank you so much. All right. Okay.